We don't have to fight We don't have to kill Everybody in the whole wide world Really just needs to chill No, we don't Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Just Chill with Oliver George. This is episode 106, and I'm very excited about the guest sitting across from me. If you're a fan of this show, you're very familiar with him already because he has been on before. He's a super funny individual, and I cannot wait to get into it. But before we do, I want to remind you, if you're watching this on YouTube and you would prefer audio only for any reason, you can get that on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and other places like that. If you're hearing my voice on one of those platforms, though, and you didn't even know there was a visual side to this show, please come over here to YouTube. And while you're doing that, if you could hit the subscribe button, it does mean a lot to me. It helps me keep this momentum going that we've got with this show. And I just appreciate it. So thank you so much if you're joining in for the first time or you're a longtime fan. If you want to reach out to me, maybe with a cool guest idea or some general feedback about the show, you can hit me up on social media, which you saw at the beginning there, or send me an email at justchillpodcasting at gmail.com. Now back to the guest or the man of the hour, as I often say, a uh, very good friend, He's one of the most well-known and beloved comics in the Ottawa comedy scene. He's the host with the most. I'm really happy to have you back. It's Tavis Maplesden. Thanks, dude. Thanks for having me. It's great to be back. How have you been? I've been great. Yeah. I, I, you're going to get like a, a cool suggestion for a guest. It's like, stop bringing Tavis on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, au contraire. <laughs> Your last learned? episode performed extremely well. I was going to touch on that too because... I never really know what's going to pop off. And for whatever reason, the last episode you did, yeah. uh, it's like 10,000 views or something. Well, it it's was been a couple of years, but still. You said it was three hours long. And maybe people do what I do is like put it on and go to sleep. They like, fall, well, pass so, out when they're drunk or this something. This is so boring. You put me right to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. I think there's a lot of funny moments in that. I think people yeah. people understand what a funny dude you are, you know? Well, thank you very much. It's kind of you. I, well, I'm constantly surprised. I guess it's because you're a family man, but like you seem like the kind of guy that could be getting out there and zipping around the country and, and really, you know, yeah, I mean, I'm, I, uh, that's part of the goal for the next little while. I'm actually going to BC on Saturday. So nice. a few days from now. Okay. I spoke um, too soon for, uh, no, it's just, it was supposed to be like a family visit and friends visit and stuff, but it's, uh, kind of devolved to just me going out for a week and doing a couple cool shows and seeing some friends. So sweet. Fun. Yeah. Make some contacts. Have you performed out there before? Or? Yeah, I have pretty much like once a year we've gone out to visit our friends and I throw a show in there if I can. And, nice. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna be playing the Mint in Victoria, which Damn. is uh, amazing. Uh, Sounds prestigious. It's a it's actually like a, it's like a Thai restaurant, I believe, but they put on show, <laughs> they put on shows there. They have this amazing <laughs> show space, and it's like easily one of the best independent shows in the country. It's, it's a nice room. Fantastic. Okay, yeah. sweet. It's yeah, great. I've never heard of it, but I don't. I've never been out to the West Coast, so that doesn't surprise me. You should go. It's amazing. It's definitely a place I want to visit. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised I haven't. My brother was living out there for years, and. I guess we're not that close. Yeah. Because <laughs> I never made I a trip. I didn't even out. know you had a brother. So I have two brothers, actually. But <laughs> one of them lives in Thailand, so I don't see okay. him really every few years, maybe. Yeah. Um, I'm overdue to go there, I suppose, for the long way trip around the planet. But yeah, that's, that's hard one. to, you know. For sure. You got to go for a few weeks if you're going to go on that 20-hour plane ride or whatever it is. And Yeah, definitely. And then it's like, do you bring the kids? If so, it's going to be way more complicated, way more expensive. Or do you go just me and Kelly and then the kids will resent us for the next year for not bringing us to this awesome country? Uh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's um, the West Coast though of, of Canada is one of those places that really is like a bucket list thing for me to at some point, hopefully in the next few years, I'd like to get out there. You should, dude. While, while there's still like cheap tickets and stuff. like uh, I thought you were going to say like, well, like like before it's all burned down. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, they had a rough summer last time, eh? Yeah. And then the, then we had it for winter because it's been spring, winter all, yeah. all the year. It's crazy. As much as Ottawa weather is probably not super relatable for everybody listening, it has been... Uh, the stuff in Ottawa in the last five years has made me go like, all right, something's going on with climate change. You, you yeah. got to be lying to yourself. We didn't have tornadoes here growing up, and now it's like commonplace yeah, to be exactly. it's the crazy. windy Canadian city for some reason. Yeah. I don't know. I don't get it. Um, is there any, before we get into really conversing here, is there anything you want to plug show wise? This will probably go up in about a week. So I don't um, know if there's anything coming up on the horizon for the spring or just, uh, just my weekly show. If you're in, uh, if you're in Ottawa Tuesday nights at no forks given at King Edward in Somerset East, uh, right by Ottawa university. I run a show every Tuesday at eight o'clock. It's a fantastic show. It's free. For you, uh, the food's great and the drinks are cold, and it's a it's a really 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 good room. So come check it out. 
You get a lot of campus crowds, like uh, younger audiences out there. I would imagine. Sometimes, yeah, but we uh, we have some regulars who are a bit older and stuff that come in, and uh, but yeah, we got a lot of students, and they're uh, they're interesting audience members because they have gone through like going through the pandemic. A lot of them never got the chance to go anywhere. Yeah, between they were like fifteen and eighteen like, or something. We haven't had that adult live entertainment scene. Yeah. yeah. So, so like, yeah, you can go like, give it up for something and people just sit there and you're like, oh, that means clap for it. But like, you guys don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And a lot of hands ups where you're like, hey, who here uh, loves uh, laughing? And people will put their hand up. <laughs> and you're One like, guy's like, I'm not sure. Yeah. No, they kind of, they're like, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I want to laugh and stuff, but we get them. They uh, Interesting. So you're saying they're sort of like more reserved. I was thinking yeah. because of, uh, you know, the Matt Reif type videos that are so popular and, and he's wildly talented, but he's really ushered in this whole I would imagine for people who don't go to comedy shows they see that and then they're like oh this is an interactive thing where the comic's just gonna take comments from the audience and and I mean Russell Peters did a lot of that too it certainly is a thing that you can do but yeah it's definitely not what every comic does and it's not great to have people going to shows thinking that every comic's gonna want you like interrupting uh, yeah 100% I mean <clears throat> I'd say the majority of comics are doing sets so you'll have like a, like I do, I do a lot of crowd work and just talk to people and stuff. Um, but there, I, there is a point in a show where say you have like the host off the top is doing some crowd work and he's like, Oh, ha ha. And there's someone funny that's, that's bantering back and forth. And then the, the person who goes up first, the bullet, we call it, they talk to that person or something. You're like, you're like, okay, we got to get into some jokes and stuff. You get to like a third comic and the show's gone. Yeah. Like the crowd now is like, we're going to interact with everything. That's yeah. what we want to do. It's and open it can, season. Yeah. And it can really mess things up for, cause a lot of people are like, I don't talk to the crowd. I don't want them to interrupt me. So I don't want them to look me in the eyes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on the comic. Human yeah. garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, you definitely can't assume that every comic's going to want that because it can no. be super disruptive for somebody's flow if they're really trying to memorize some crazy thing or, you know, everyone's yeah, yeah. got different styles. So. Oh, yeah. And some people, I mean, some people seem angry to be there and they like are yelling at you and you're like, okay, I don't know what you're doing. Like, yeah. <laughs> I had a woman on a show the other day and I go, how about you, glasses? And she's wearing glasses. <laughs> and she goes, glasses? <laughs> and then f to the rest of the room, he called me glasses. <laughs> I'm like, well, I don't know what your name is. What do you, you want me to call you? Dentures? And she's, uh. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, hey, fuck you, man. And I go, <laughs> God. There is something really funny about calling somebody glass, like whatever the most obvious yeah. And it's not even really outright insulting in itself. It's just, you know, no. what's uh, going on, green hat or whatever, yeah. you know? Hey, yellow shirt. And they're like, who, me? And you're like, yeah, you're wearing a yellow shirt. Like, not that common of a shirt color. The, yeah, the, but the people do kind of get weirded out. They're like, that's not my name. I'm like, I don't know your name. Yeah. <laughs> you're a stranger. Like, the only reason that I think it's ever ridiculous is if somebody's in the front row and they have that kind of response to any sort of interaction with a the comic. Then I'm like... You know, this is bizarre that I guess if you got shoved there, but I think the club people usually know not to put scared looking people in the front row. And yet they do. They, you'll well, have, you'll I guess because some comics have fun with that. Yeah. 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 It's uh, it's it's weird. I, I think the majority of people don't want to go to a comedy show and talk to the, the comics. Yeah. And the ones that do, you shouldn't let them in. <laughs> like, yeah. like you should be bugging people a little bit and teasing it out of them. But people who are like trying to add to your jokes and stuff, you're just like, all right, you need to go, yeah, to, pipe go to, the down. to the room. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Um, well, I wanted to talk about the milestones that you have accomplished with this show, because as we mentioned, you've been here before. You are not the technically the only three time guest, but you're the only person who's come three times in studio. Okay. And the only other person who's been on the show three times is one of those is also kind of like a bit iffy because uh, it's Eric LeClaire, a uh, magician oh, yeah, yeah, extraordinaire. Yeah. He came on the first time on a Zoom interview in the pandemic. And then I interviewed him uh, with all the guys from Big Trick Energy when they were promoting their show. Doesn't count. No, and it was, a, it was like a 15 minute press junket interview that yeah. I, it was barely like an actual episode of this show, but I, I had such a good time. I put it up as one. 
And then finally he came back in person with Alex from the, uh, the same show. So, okay. The, you no, know, there's some asterisks there. Yeah, he's sure. been on three times, but I don't know that it qualifies. Um, I Congrats love, to uh, him, too. He just won the Faces magazine. Uh, co- comic of the year. Which is, you know, I would. I, I guess there's no magician category. He is a very funny dude. But. He's great, dude. I'm. I, I, you probably don't know this, but I'm like a regular opener for him. I think I actually just noticed that on social media like two days ago that yeah. you were opening the um, Smoke is Pocus. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've done about it's a great show. five of them. It's fantastic. I've done about five of them and I got a couple lined up. There's a few I can't do in the next few months, but I got a couple lined up when I come back from BC. It's great, dude. Yeah, it's, it's such a unique show to go to. <laughs> yeah, but the crazy thing, like if you guys don't know, check out Smokus Pocus. Uh, it's it plays at Sky Lounge uh, in, in Ottawa, the market. In the yeah. market. Um, it's He's ama- done shows in Toronto as well. Yeah, he does. What as I know. Well. Yeah, but it's it's amazing because it, it's a weed themed. Uh, magic show. Yeah. So there's lots of like there's a bong in it and stuff like whatever crazy stuff. But munchies it, but references and it, stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But the crowd, half of them are incredibly stoned. Well, they're encouraged to come. Yeah. And with magic, that's cool because like ma- uh, people that are stoned, you like wave your hand in front of their face. They go, "Whoa." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it looks like more fingers. Um, but when you're doing a 10 minute comedy opener, it's the roughest set. You can oh yeah, do. I can imagine it's if you're just so doing stand up for those people. Yeah. yeah, it's tough. I think I've had one that went really well, and I was and got lots of laughs and stuff. I've had a couple that were just like passable, and I've had a couple like the first one I did. I was like, man, I'm not good at this. And then later I realized it's like the people, their brains are a few seconds behind. Yeah. And sometimes you'll ask them after and they're like, no, we had a great time. Yeah. Because I, I, I did a 420 show once and I did a, a weed lounge once too. And both times I felt not that like they didn't like me or something, but it was just a much more sedated, muted response. Yeah. It's just completely different from what you're expecting from. A, it's not going to be uproarious. Comedy, yeah. Yeah. Or nothing. Like, Unless you're Mike Rita and you do that fucking room every week for yeah. years. Then yeah, you yeah. know how to work the stoned crowd because he's a masterminded that. I, I would like to learn that for sure because it comes in handy but it might I'll, take you on as a padawan yeah <laughs> who knows but the, the, i i like last time i w- i distinctly remember seeing a couple and and she she was like sitting there looking like this like she couldn't be fucking bothered to be there like i hate this oh, brutal. she was really stoned but she was just like uh and her boyfriend or whatever sitting next to her and he was on the edge of his seat, like <laughs> loving my stuff, but neither of them were laughing. Like he yeah. wasn't laughing. They were just quiet. They're both forgetting the <laughs> crucial component yeah. that a comedian needs. Yeah. But anyway, it's super fun. I get to do some, some stock jokes and then I bring him up and then we watch his show and his show's great. So yeah, yeah. And he has a guy on the side doing all the sound cues and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It was uh, really, really entertaining. And I don't, I won't even begin to talk about what he does because you don't want to spoil it. Yeah, if you've seen the show, then you know you know no, it, a few of the little. It's magic, though, dude. I I love Matt. Sometimes comics uh, badmouth magic. They're like, oh, it's like it's not funny. It's magic. I'm like, it's funny and magic. Like, I, yeah, Rhinestone was one. Was yeah, one Rhinestone's one. Great, great too. I love it. I was. This is what I was wondering though. When he won the Faces magazine thing just last week, or whatever, I was wondering if there were any comics on that list, not that were nominated, that would be salty over the fact that he's. More primarily seen as a magician who is also funny, as opposed uh, most, to most. Most I knew were like, "Who is that?" They'd never heard of him because oh, yeah. it's a difference. We run in different. Then you circles. know, at least one or two of those is resentful that he won. One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, dude, the, that is. I mean, it's the, one of the funniest things. Faces magazine where people. I was going like, to say, oh, who cares? Yeah. Oh, I ultimately. don't want that. People are like, oh, I don't even care about that. But if you were going to vote for me, yeah, <laughs> do it every day at eight a.m. for the next forty days. Like, well, oh. and you can nominate yourself to be a nominee in that the first place too. Any, anyone <laughs> just has to say, hey, I think this guy is because I'm pretty sure. No, I think someone may have actually nominated our podcast because one year we were nominated. But oh, that's great. Yeah, but it it was kind of a pain in the ass because then you're just trying to harass people to vote for you, and it just feels like a popularity contest. Yeah. Which, and, and and when you win, what you win is you get to go to the gala dinner, which you have to pay for. Yeah, you got to pay like 200 And then you like pay for a subscription to the magazine. That's <laughs> crazy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, all the power to them, Faces Magazine, do what you do, but... Uh, it's not not my idea of a great accolade. Yeah, for for sure. It's cool. Like it, it definitely helps if you get one and you can add it to your resume or whatever. It doesn't look bad. No, oh, yeah, you know true. they're yeah. legitimate organization, I suppose. But yeah, I'm not going to put too much stock in it or stress. But I would you, just lie and say, I, yeah. Yeah. if you want to do a feature <laughs> article on this show, then I could be swayed to you know maybe <laughs> yeah. change my opinion. Exactly. I think I reached out to them back in the day too, or Ottawa Life Magazine, or one of those. But 
We're, we're the continual underdog of the podcast. I was world. Uh, <laughs> I was in Ottawa Life magazine actually. Oh yeah, it must have been during the pandemic, post pandemic. Yeah, they did. There was an article about comedy in Ottawa, and there's a little bit um, about me, which was really cool. Nice. Um, that's a tough magazine to find, dude. I'll tell you that yeah. much. <laughs> like they deliver it, I think, with the Globe and Mail or something. But outside of that, and we live in Ottawa. And I'm like, shouldn't be too hard to find <laughs> Ottawa Life magazine. It's very hard. I had to go to like three bookshops and there was one copy. <laughs> like, oh my God. Meanwhile, they're readily abundant in Toronto. Yeah. For exactly. some reason we haven't <laughs> figured Red out. Red Deer, Alberta. <laughs> yeah. They've got it they're, overstock. They're reading up on us. I hate those guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Oh man. Oh shit. I, one thing I do want to not forget there's um, a couple of announcements I wanted to make. One is really happy and one is a bummer. Um, well, more than a bummer. Very sad. Uh, so the first one is congratulations to Kyle Brownrigg for winning a Juno Best Comedy Album of yeah. the Year. Like, just fucking A. He's such a nice dude. He was the first ever guest on this show. Yeah. So there's some s sentimental connection for me there. I've had a great time getting to know him and, and be a friend with him. So definitely. I mean, no, he was yeah, well-earned. That's, that's amazing. I, I sent him a message the other day. I was like, congrats, dude. That's awesome. Because, like, yeah, he's a hardworking, very funny comic. So yeah. he deserves that. I was only respect. slightly conflicted because uh, Derek Segain was also Me up. too, yeah. And he was also on our 100th and, episode. So it was like, I had ties to both these guys. Yeah. But, and they're and, both great dudes. And Lori Elliott, I got the chance to work with her a couple months back she's great fantastic yeah i wasn't as familiar with her i know may martin's very funny i've seen her in a lot of stuff and yeah she's in the uk i think right i think she's uk originally i think she might be over here now okay because she's always at largo in la and stuff uh, okay. i see her popping up there a lot but who knows uh, yeah. maybe she's got that money to fly all over the place i don't know and was there anyone else and There's also, somebody else we're forgetting yeah. uh graham something oh graham uh yeah from from vancouver <laughs> He's uh, <laughs> that's his name, Graham from Vancouver. I feel like a dick now. I named we named everybody else. Yeah, no, I, uh, I I've never I've never worked with him yet. I, uh, I hear he's great. He runs uh, he helps run the debaters for CBC. I'm pretty sure. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Um, Damn, I wish I knew his last name now. I should have written that down. Just to edit it in. Yeah, Graham Clark. Mm. <laughs> yeah, we'll do that. I could add that in. Um, and also, okay, so yeah, but on a sad note, um, I did want to say rest in peace to Tom Hills. Yeah. A uh, local comic. Uh, I mean, I don't know if he did a lot of other shows abroad, but he was pretty consistent here, especially for a couple of years. And um, I was, I'm not going to try and pretend I was super tight with him, but I've definitely been on a couple of shows with him. And I think I even remember thinking that he didn't like me when I first met him. And eventually I asked him. And then once I did that, it was like all the ice was broken and I, and I had some great combos with him. Yeah. But even just seeing how many people that I know that uh, I am very close with that are clearly affected by his passing is enough for me to want to mention it on here. So yeah, you know, definitely condolences man. to his family and, and anyone out there who's, uh, you know, missing this guy right now because he, from all, by all accounts, seems like a great, hilarious dude. And yeah, I, I don't know anything about the passing, nor do I want to inquire into, into what the details of that are, but yeah, whatever it may be, you always wonder when, um, it's a comedian just because, you know, uh, I have my own demons. I think we all kind of do. So I yeah. hope it was, well, I don't yeah, know. He you had, can't hope for any death, really. He uh, he was in the Toronto scene years ago and then Ottawa and Kingston because he, uh, he was in Brockville. Uh, yeah, it's really sad, dude. Like, it's it sucks. I hope he's at peace wherever he is. Yeah, you know? he, was, uh, he was a good dude. I, I hadn't seen him in a while. And, like, we weren't insanely close either, but, like, did a lot of shows together. And uh, he, was a, he was a good laugh and... Uh, a funny guy. Um, yeah, I'll throw up a picture of him and just so people can see yeah. who we're talking about. Because, yeah, he seems like a nice guy and uh, it sucks he's gone so soon, you know? Yeah. Such a young age to pass away. Definitely. It's... So, has, yeah, that's definitely uh, kind of kills the, the combo mojo here, but I, I wanted to get it in there. Yeah. Um, honestly, though, that's not the worst pivot here because I wanted to sort of address uh, that we had another pretty unintended hiatus, which was a bit of a problem in the end of last scene. And I had really wanted to correct that this year. But uh, since launching season five uh, with January, with the new year, we've put up three episodes. This will be the fourth. Um, but yeah, if I'm being real, uh, we did one with Shane, the whale expert, uh, and he was great. And, and I was still in pretty good shape, I feel like, then. And then the back half of February and, and the first half of March, that whole month, I was really going through some shit. Uh, you know, just so I felt like I just, this wasn't a priority. I just need to get my, my shit together. Mm -hmm. I just felt like I wasn't taking care of myself. There's the winter blues, obviously, I think affects a lot of us, just yeah. all the gray skies and shit. But 
definitely had some depression going on and uh, I gained a bit of weight that I wasn't really happy about. You can go see the last couple episodes, <laughs> compare that to some older ones. You'll see, you'll see the doughiness. At least I do. I, I have OCD, so I fixate on that shit. Um, that sounds very vain, but you know, all these things can culminate and make you just feel like a bag of shit. Like yeah. I just felt like I wasn't on top of anything. I wasn't having um, that fire in the belly to chase after something, you know, I felt really directionless and, and yeah. So that's where I was at. Just, you know, I just wanted to, you know, kind of, cause we're talking about Tom and again, I don't know if that, how he passed, but if there's any chance that it was related to any kind of mental health thing, just remind people to talk about it. And if anyone's going through something, send me an email. Like, even if we don't know each other, like I would rather you do that than anything drastic you know because yeah it's jesus the things the father finds out about his son on this show oh i what, told this he, to you and mom a couple weeks what, ago that he's got an email account i didn't know you had an email account <laughs> <laughs> no no but i told you and mom a couple weeks ago when we called you that, that i was having a bit of a rough spell you know um yeah but i think sometimes in a casual conversation you don't necessarily pick up on how how big a deal this is or not right? um like, i mean it wasn't always consistent there was definitely some some really low lows i felt and uh and you know and drinking during the winter is definitely something that's too easy to do and eating shitty food and all of that it's just like really tempting <laughs> you know you're just looking for those uh com comforts and dopamine triggers and just like everything to kind of satisfy what you can't get because yeah you don't want to really go out because it sucks outside or yeah people just I, uh, as much. i've been i've been doing a thing like that i've been i've been drinking but i've also been fasting so yeah i've done that before so uh it's very inexpensive <laughs> are you being serious though you have to balance it out I've had, I've done I, that actually, before. I actually had a couple days uh actually the other day i went to a little uh the the orlean no sorry orleans the uh vanier sugar festival it was sure. it was great it was in this museum museo park in vanier and it was like an outdoor kind of uh maple taffy kind of place and stuff that sounds and, fun and yeah we went with uh, uh some family friends through our, our son's buddy and uh and I cracked a beer. I was like, "Oh, they have a they have a beer tent there." And I was like, "I haven't eaten anything in like twenty oh, hours." Shit. And uh, it was great. Oh, because you I were coming hammered. off of it fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it'll get you. That yeah. that that sugar shack, you know, that burnt down a few years. It back. did. Right? Yeah, they had to rebuild it, and so it's nice now. I guess it's, everything's brand new. It, yeah, it's uh, and made of metal. I think they're like not again. <laughs> <laughs> my my son goes, "How did it burn down?" I'm like. I don't know, fire. What do you, what do you mean how to bring it? <laughs> Plasma. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's hilarious. But no, we had a good time. Yeah. Um, but no, yeah, definitely. Winter's tough, man. And this yeah. winter's, this winter's been weird because it's been bright and warm. Yeah. And it almost makes you feel shittier if you still feel down. Yeah. But then you're like, oh, it's nice. out. like, I, I get that even just with my life because I have so many things to be grateful for. And I do try to think about that and, and be consciously aware of that. But when you can't because something like a depression is really fucking with you or you're just in a real funk you can feel like even more guilty that you're taking it for granted or that you're not yeah. like oh like i got a beautiful wife and my kids are all healthy and you know like uh, we're not struggling for money like everything all the things people a million people would kill to be in your shoes and then you just feel like yeah like you can or at but, least but, i can but that feel doesn't but that, that doesn't change it right that doesn't change how you feel like, yeah that's very true and uh and i mean you kind of have to be good to yourself and be like, Hey, I'm not a bad person. Cause I feel depressed. Even yeah. Though I have, it all, can compound all, though. If you don't get ahead of it and, and have that pep talk with yourself, you know? Yeah. But it can exist. Like I, I actually, you won't believe this, but being a comedian, I don't think I'm all that mentally ill. <laughs> like <laughs> I think you mentioned this before when we talked about your parents that you had like a good upbringing and yeah, for the most part, but like, I just mean like, like genetically, I, I haven't inherited too much and stuff and I, but I can get depressed. I can have depressions. It's usually situational where I'm like, mm. Oh no, I need to get more money or something yeah, or whatever, whatever it is, whatever puts me in a funk, but I'm well aware of it. Like I'm conscious. I'm like, I'm going through a depression. It won't last. And I can, I think I know how I can help get myself out of it, but you're still in it. Like it doesn't, it's that's, not a light like switch. The, you know, I'm better now. The most rational way to handle it really is to try to like talk about it logically to yourself. Maybe I, that means I am mentally ill. <laughs> no, no, no. I think that's really healthy to talk about the things that feel like that are, they're so overwhelming. And yeah. then if you actually put it to words, sometimes that can often bring it back to a graspable realm, which you is know? really hard. That's the it thing. is. And yeah, yeah. Th this is funny when you're talking about that. Um, I'm, I'm working on a little bit that I threw out there the other day about 
it's kind of deeply ironic, but like what we're talking about, but like men especially are, are kind of not taught to bottle things up, but you kind of just bottle things up, right? Like, or at least people at least stereotypically, have, yeah. least stereotypically. Yeah. Stereotypically. And, and well, I'm sure women do too, but like men more so there's this idea of like, keep it to yourself, but like talking about things helps admitting like, yeah, I'm, I'm down. I've got a depression, yeah. like whatever. But the person I hate the most in the entire universe is the person you walk up to and you're like, Hey, how's it going? And they're like, not so good, man. You're like, nope, <laughs> that's not how we do this. <laughs> if I say, how's it going? You go good. And then we walk past each other. Like that's oh, how no. society works, right? Yeah. So, but I mean, it all depends how close this person is to you. Uh, yeah. To some degree. I mean, uh, it might, it's, it's just a joke, but like if my, if my best <laughs> friend was like, I'm depressed, I'd be, I wouldn't be like, can't get fucked. <laughs> yeah. but, but it's um, like some dude, you, you know, on the street, like hey, man. sort of an acquaintance. Yeah. yeah. How's it going? Oh, how much time you got. That's my, <laughs> that's my father-in-law's line oh, all the time. I'm like, Jesus Christ. But, uh, it's, uh, I like when he does it, but yeah, it's a, it, it's funny because I find that really funny, but it is the exact opposite of how we should treat people. Yeah. For sure. If someone tells you like, no, I'm writhing in emotional agony right now. Yeah. And then then you're so weirded out. You're like, good oh, luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a quarter. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, well, I mean, I just thought it was worth mentioning because I feel like there's always somebody out there who's going through some shit. And, yeah. and I have no idea how people perceive me in a large way, especially somebody who only knows me through the capacity of like watching this on YouTube and maybe has no real world connection to me at all. They might think, oh, he's all, you know, got his shit together. I, I like to think I'm pretty open on this show. But anyways, it was just one of those things that, yeah. I just wanted to kind of put it out there and mm -hmm. uh, like a quote I heard from, I think it's from Mr. Rogers was, uh, if it's mentionable, then it's manageable. And oh, that yeah. quote really helped me. And I, and I tell that to my son too, because I do think it's, it's worth repeating that. Th if, those are big words for Mr. Rogers to be using with his crowd. No kidding. Mentionable yeah, but I think he, he treated his, his child crowd uh, like with a lot of respect and, and gave yeah. them a lot of credit for being more smarter than a lot of adults probably assumed they were. Yeah, that, the, like Still that, big I, words for little kids. I yeah. know, that, do you remember that episode? A is for anti disestablishmentarianism. <laughs> <laughs> that was a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, oh, shit. I wanted to talk about, um, well, a lot of geeky stuff. But first thing I wanted to bring up was the roast that you and I did at Comic-Con. Yeah. Because I only realized this morning that that, happened and came out on youtube and all that like way after the last time you were on the show so we haven't really yeah. i don't know if i i must have mentioned it when i put it up but it still only has like a hundred views and i thought it was fucking funny that's bs man it was great it yeah was, it was awesome it's yeah. like go watch it now link, yeah i'm gonna link, put a link the link is here <laughs> i'll move it around <laughs> so it's like floating um yeah no it really is uh i think a solid effort on our part i think not to gloat but i thought we were the best roasters of that battle oh yeah not that anyone so, else yeah. was dog shit or anything but yeah. like i thought the audience the whole thing, really the whole thing was really fun man i'm glad like the the little room filled up with people that were yeah. like oh it's gonna be great and we it had was. some it was groaners fun. yeah certain jokes that people yeah. were clearly into but we still got the groan you yeah know? and there was a couple a couple that were like "Ooh, that's kind of offside i, I forget yeah. exactly what but there was like uh, and people a... love spider-man compared to batman that was just like yeah. a given i felt like i would i was the underdog from the start i i've shown that picture to people uh uh we took like a bunch of group shots. I was Spider-Man. Oliver was Batman. Yeah, sorry. I should have probably uh, go watch the video. That, <laughs> Pause this that, shit. That suit though was so awesome, dude. When I dressed up as Spider-Man, yeah. I looked in the mirror. I was like, this is the best. You dude. looked way more legitimate so, than I did. So good. Um, but the one thing was the guy was like, hey, you're going to have to memorize your roast because you can't really see through the mask. And I was like, oh yeah, uh, that's going to be a problem. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't have the capacity. Yeah, I would wrote memory. like at least half of mine the day before. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I was workshopping a bit of st one or two of them with you as well. Yeah. But um, yeah, that you got clever though, because then you you took it off and said something about being Peter Parker. Yeah. And then you brought like these little glasses out. It was my yeah, it was my son's uh, Spider Man mask, and I was like, yeah, it was like super. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. Yeah, we just That's anyways fun. go watch it, people. Yeah. But uh, the other reason I bring up Comic Con is because uh, Matt Champ, also past guest of this show, episode seven, I believe, he sent me a link um, that now there's a period for I guess the next few months where you can pitch to Ottawa Comic. Con, which I think is in September, to do a podcast there, like live. Oh, sick. And we have a little bit of experience now after doing the 100th episode at Yuck Yucks, but I felt like that went pretty well. 
overall. I thought it was a good show. A lot yeah. of freaking laughs and everybody, the audience could have been a bit bigger. I think we had like 30, 40 people, but we had a good time. So I feel like a lot more confident with the whole setup. And uh, so we started brainstorming, okay, well, what, what can we do? And I kind of wanted you to weigh in because I've got two podcast ideas, assuming I can't do both, that I'm leaning towards. One would be um, me doing this sort of style of interview with like three mini interviews that are like 15 minutes each yeah. or whatever, kind of like what we did for the hundredth. Um, but it, with like me interviewing Marvel and DC characters, but get like really funny, like people like Jeff, like people who are just like good on the fucking spot yourself, like really quick on their toes that also hopefully have some knowledge, some nerdery knowledge about these characters. And I feel like that could work, but it, it would have to be done right. But I do think it has an easier pull to get people to come check it out. Yeah. If you're like, oh, uh, you know, Oliver George interviews the heroes or whatever, something like along those lines. But then the other way I was thinking of going with it is doing a more uh, informational podcast where I still have three guests get like someone who's super into cosplay, like a really well established Ottawa cosplayer and give tips to the audience or how do they get into it? You know, interview yeah. stuff. Uh, I also know a dude from the last couple of years that I've been talking with who makes these really sick uh, t-shirts and posters where he reimagines Marvel covers hip as hip hop stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah are, I've got his card in the background sick, there. Dude. Beto Art is what he goes by. But last time I actually talked to him about doing an interview and we kind of tentatively said, all right, next time when you come back, we'll, we'll set it up. And then finally, I know a dude named Jaden who uh, I knew in my youth, but I reconnected with the song at the grocery store or some shit like that. We just kind of bumped into each other. And he now I learned he had to quit his real job because the demand was so high for the hobby that he started doing, which was uh, restoring comics for people who want to send oh. them in for grading and stuff. Nice. Which I didn't even know was a thing. I yeah. thought you had to send them in raw dog and get whatever you get. Dude, you know? it's been so, become such a big thing. Like I got a couple of comics that are uh, they're pretty decent. They definitely could use a, a retouch for sure because they're old beat up ones. I um, think a lot of people would be interested in knowing what that process is. Like how do you yeah, retouch a I think comic? You do, I think you should try to do all all those things do both you, of them yeah even yeah, do, fuck, that'd be awesome like see if you can do some roving reporter stuff there too well that i could probably do for sure get like a press pass or or even just pay to get in and then just walk around interviewing people i would love to do that yeah i actually did a exactly that uh probably 2015 so four years before i ever started this show but i knew I wanted to do something like that and i went with my buddy two buddies to the cornwall area pop event which yeah, is yeah. called cape and it's it's pretty cool like for what it is it's a smaller type of comic-con but you usually get a it's couple kind of, kind of stretching to get that acronym eh? <laughs> cornwall area pop event event <laughs> <laughs> we got it after two days of workshop yeah that. yeah so uh but we went there and at that time it wasn't called just chill i called it that show because i thought it was a fun intro to be like i'm oliver george and you're watching no no and this is that show that's what i, I said uh, um, so I did exactly that though, just wandering around, talking to people in weird costumes. Uh, I, that was when I first met Pat Mestriani, um, Joey Jeremiah, yeah, of course, because yeah. he was there, and I met the comic book men, um, for okay. two two of those guys from Kevin Smith's show when it was still on the air. But I don't have any of that footage, and I was even the one editing that footage, one of my first editing things I'd ever done, because uh, the guy whose computer it's on, I no longer talked to, uh, or talked to rather. He's a guy who we were like pretty much like brothers for like five years after meeting. And uh, we just had kind of a falling out. But at one point when I was editing that, he was actually living in my basement because he had just come back from Vancouver and things hadn't worked out for him. So we gave him a place to stay for a couple months while he got back on his feet. Right. Um, but anyways, yeah, we had a falling out years after that. And so... No, I don't think I'll ever get that footage. Kind of sucks. Yeah, that's too bad. I will link though. We there was another one we did. I would have liked to have seen that show. Well, you you still can. <laughs> no, no, on YouTube, uh, it's just not on this channel, but on one of my old YouTube channels, I have a similar thing we did where we went to the 420 celebrations on Parliament Hill. Oh my god! And I think it was probably pre legalization. It was one of the last years before Wait, they legalized. They didn't do them since. I don't think so. Yeah, probably not. What's the point? Yeah, yeah there's nothing to revolt. Legalize over. again. <laughs> <laughs> all or the else. stoners forgot. <laughs> yeah, all the stoners are doing it. Legalize it. We did that. Oh, shit. Yeah. Forgot. Dude, I used to, those 420 events are the best because you go by and you're like, oh, I bet it's going to be a bunch of fucking old hippies 
diehards just trying to get their some of that and it was just mainly like 15 year old dirtbag kids who like <laughs> we, we can get high <laughs> yeah Great. Good. skipping school or whatever yeah. yeah dude i used to do that all through my high school career i would go to me it used to be on majors hill park yeah and then eventually somebody said let's move it to parliament where we might actually get noticed and <laughs> affect some change yeah really stick it to the man yeah. i guess the idea was at majors hill if you're at parliament hill you would see a gigantic cloud because the view from those to each other are like yeah. perfect. You know? Major Hill would be great for that. Oh, dude, that's where it always part. was in the yeah. 2000s. And there would always be people playing guitars. I don't know if I've ever told this story on the podcast, but one time I went there, I was probably about 18 or 19. I remember based on the friends I was there with. And I saw the craziest shit where like, usually it's pretty peaceful there. But then some altercation started. I don't know if somebody had just stolen something or had previously stolen something, but... Uh, oh no, these are two stories I'm, I'm mixing up here. Actually, sorry. The first one was a woman who started beating on and harassing another woman and started like, like punching at her and, and started really assaulting her. Yeah. And she's yelling, I'll never forget this line. If you're going to smoke crack, bitch, you better pay your bills. <laughs> and so people at first are kind of just like letting them have it like a couple of cats in the summertime. You're like, all right, like nothing's too intense. Nobody's pulled out a knife or anything like you, if you are going to smoke crack, you should pay your bills. Like you, some you people think, are feeling a little bit of that. she was trying to hide out in the pot smokers? They're like, they'll never find me here. <laughs> yeah, <I don't> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's normally in the alley. Yeah. No, uh, but people did intervene eventually because this angry, larger, aggressive lady, I think grabbed her by like her weave or something like that. It was this Shit. kind of fight. Picks her up and starts pulling her over to the fucking edge down to the locks. Like, oh like she's going to throw her over into the water and brutalize her and yeah. just be done with her. So that's when some, like, large men, whoever was around, they're like, all right, <laughs> I got to step in here. Yeah, I mean. It was fucked it, up to it's see It's got to yeah. be crazy to get a bunch of potheads to, like intervene because they're just like yeah, exactly. what i was just here to yeah oh yeah afterwards easy. everybody's buzz was killed everyone had to toke up again and yeah. kind of restoke the fire once. well that's good yeah <laughs> that's crazy dude yeah there was another time the other story i was i was mixing up was something similar where um less dramatic but i saw somebody jack like a big brick of weed from someone's bag and bolt and then that other guy's dog was kind of like chasing him down <laughs> so that was more like of a <laughs> see i'm telling you <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> that's exactly how i always saw those 420 things i did i didn't see them as like oh it's a piece it love sit in and stuff it was like there's a bunch of dirt bags here for especially sure especially downtown yeah all the like sketchy people from the mission and stuff are gonna come over yeah and, which is yeah. i mean whatever but it's like uh uh, the uh, the when I first moved here, I lived on the the Gatineau side, and I would walk along the like under Parliament where the river is all the time oh, okay, over yeah. to the locks, and I yeah. cross over. So I spent a lot of time at those locks. There's tons of groundhogs that live around there, oh. uh, and, and I saw one once. A dog went by, and the groundhog ran up the side of like the the retaining wall thing, and it went into like a x like a effluence pipe, like where the water would come out. Oh, and, stuff. Crazy. and I was like, whoa! I didn't know they could do that <laughs> and it was like it was like four feet off the ground like it scaled up and it went right in and then like two seconds later it, it i must have turned around somewhere and its little head popped out oh, so it, I, I had you got a picture i, of I had a picture oh, a million years ago but it was just this like little groundhog sticking his head out i'm like how did they discover this perfect the hiding spot how many had to get stuck before one was like no i could fit in here uh, yeah I don't know. I <laughs> there's question. like a bunch of groundhog skeletons just, yeah just, just their bums hanging the out oh no that one's too small oh yeah. man um, yeah i wonder i mean animals are pretty freaking creative like that i mean I, that's what i learned last time we did an episode with the whale expert he was telling us just how ingenious some of their little plans they can come up with are yeah, especially well, whales are super i smart. mean i don't want to repeat what the whale guy probably said <laughs> <laughs> he probably knows better than me but i just learned that whales uh, which makes sense have like their own dialects oh yeah like, yeah like Dude, the la watch languages that are completely different he studies that uh, that's specifically awesome. the sperm whale codas which are like these little morse code kind of clicks you should yeah. check it out right. or even better yet and everyone should go watch uh i'll plug this again watch uh, secrets of the whales on disney plus it's a james cameron produced uh sigourney weaver narrated and the fourth episode is all about Shane and what he does in Dominica. So yeah, it'll be sick if Very they cool. if they they like overdubbed in whale language so the whales can watch it. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, all right. Um well speaking of which, actually, um and academics and and living well, not so living creatures. 
Yeah, as long as everything goes as planned, a week from today, I'm supposed to be interviewing a paleobiologist and talking about dinosaurs. So Sick. That's, I'm very excited. You have no idea how excited I am. Are Dad? you excited for that one, Dad? Or? Yeah, looking forward to it. You didn't turn on your mic, Dad. No. <laughs> he said he's looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to that one, yeah. Um, what if he's watching? So in my career as an archaeologist, uh, which is what I did. Oh, I forgot. Years, we talked yeah, about that last ago. time. God yeah. damn. Um, Anytime we would talk to people, we'd be out in the field or something. People go, what are you doing? We're like, uh, archaeology. And they're like, oh, you're looking for dinosaur bones? Mm. And we're like, no, uh, that's paleontology. And uh, I wonder if he gets it the other way. This I, I strongly doubt it. <laughs> no, everyone likes paleontology. People look, yeah, yeah. They're, they're like, whoa, dinosaur bones. Like archaeology is the study of um, people, the things that humans have Yeah, left, societies basically. and yeah. stuff, yeah. So when you'd explain that, then they just go, eh, and walked away. Yeah, they go, I hate people. I don't want to see them. <laughs> I want to see dinos. But the one time we were, we were digging, so there was all would hap- always would happen. They'd be like, oh, dinosaurs? We'd go, no, sorry. And they go, uh, I'm, I hate you. And they leave. Well, this one time, we're, we're behind a school. There's like an elementary school. It's near Cornwall, I think. And uh, and we're digging the strip that they're going to develop into something, I guess. So we're looking. And all these kids come at recess over to the fence. And they're like, whoa, yeah, cool. And uh, and I go, okay, let's tell them we're looking for dinosaur bones. Because the one... They, That's what they want to hear. They, yeah. And they're like, what are you guys doing? We're like, we're looking for dinosaur bones. And then uh, and they go, well, and then they run off. And then their teacher comes over like five minutes later. She goes, oh, so you guys are a uh, paleontologist? I'm like, no. <laughs> like, <laughs> they're backfired walk. again. <laughs> That's but fun. It was fun. Oh, man. Uh, oh, shit. Before I uh, forget my geeky list, I wanted to ask if you've seen X-Men 97. No, I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, I've, I've much been less to discuss that. Listening to him. I didn't awesome. watch the show that much back in the day. Oh, no. I did watch it, but I wasn't like... It, you're a little older than me. Yeah, right? a lot older. <laughs> no, you're what, like 42 or something? Sure. Now, what are you? I'm going to be I'm gonna be 45 in a couple weeks. Oh, shit. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, when, it, when that came out, like I was pushing like 20 and stuff. So uh, in university, yeah. I, I didn't watch a lot of, of TV. I did see the show and I, I did watch some stuff, but it wasn't like paramount to my, it, like it didn't bring me up. Like a lot yeah, of people yeah. were raised. I on was it, like, like Fox uh, kids when I was yeah. 10, whatever. Or yeah. no, it can't be that much of a difference. I would have been, uh, well, it was out yeah. from 90, Two to ninety seven, I think. Yeah. Um. So, but I haven't seen the new one yet. But I've been listening to. I listened to uh, Rob Liefeld's podcast, Robservations. Oh, yeah. it. It's great. Nice. It's, if you like comics, you gotta listen to that. Podcast. Yeah. He goes in depth about. Comics. I don't always love his artwork. No, but people I, have issues. Seems with like a sure. nice enough guy. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Even that, I'm not sure. But he knows he's a he's a comic historian, dude. Like he knows his stuff, and he just go off the top of his head and talk for an hour about whatever t- whatever subject. That I comics. didn't know. Yeah, it's fa- it's fascinating. It's a good good listen to, um, but no, I, I do want to check it out. I'll see if Charlie wants to watch the, that and see if he likes because he's he likes the idea of X Men and stuff too. So yeah, it's uh, honestly I've only seen the first two, but it's pretty impressive. I I didn't know what to expect. I kind of thought they might screw it up, Disney that they might change a bunch of stuff, but it really just feels like slightly better like, animation. Yeah, added Star Wars characters. Too. Yeah, exactly. Oh, great. <laughs> it's Finn is here. Yeah. Like, oh, God. <laughs> I don't know why I picked Finn. They all suck from the sequels. Yeah, I was not too pleased with that, I tell you. Well, I mean, like, Mandalorian was pretty fucking cool the first couple seasons I've seen, and I liked that. Yeah, I've heard some of the shows are good. There's My, so many, yeah, though. Yeah. I haven't seen Ahsoka. I haven't seen Andor. Yeah. Now there's the the Acolyte is coming out soon. Yeah, I don't or know. Acolyte. I don't know how you say that. Probably not the first way you said it. Yeah, <laughs> they were similar. <laughs> um, yeah, those those sequels. I don't want to get into it too much. It doesn't matter to me. But like, uh, I the first one, I was like, yeah, this is Star Wars. What the hell? The second one, which everyone hated, I actually liked more than most people. Eh, it was okay. And, like it, it had some cool stuff. Obviously, I didn't it hate some, it, but some crap in it and people are like you killed the, luke the like, milk yeah. the milking thing yeah, was that weird was, yeah it was it was unusual um, but, the, but you know what like there's always goofy stuff in all those leia things. floating back through space was what really ruined that movie for me yeah, especially when I, the actress had died and you're like this was the perfect opportunity guys i know yeah like and they're like no we're gonna bring her i know it's probably because they wanted to honor the stuff she had already filmed but even assuming she had lived that's just such a weird scene to write in that 
she was force sensitive, but yeah. now all of a sudden she can survive the vacuum of space and fly back like. Can you imagine the, the only way you discover you have the force is like on your deathbed? <laughs> yeah. Like you, by That's the way, when you it activated, the force, and then it goes away again. Unless like, you could argue it's like the spirits of Yoda and Obi Wan guiding her back because she still has work to do or whatever. You I'm could sure argue some, a lot of stuff. It it, the, it was goofy as fuck though. The third, I, I hated that they brought the, uh, the, emperor? the emperor back. It was so it was okay. it was so dumb. And Snoke was his what? I don't even remember. It was like one of the clones or something. Yeah. I, I feel like what happened was Snoke would like, you know, the problem with Star Wars and like fandom is like someone puts something out, out and then all the fans go, I think it's this. In fan theories, there's a thousand of them. And probably one of them's right. Yeah. Like it happened. The big one was Lost when Lost came out. Yeah. And they're like, you'll never guess what the island is. And people are like, is it purgatory between life and death? Like, and they go, no, no, it's not that. And then they spend eight seasons pretending Six. it's not that. Whatever. Sorry, I was a big Lost, Losty. I don't know. What but they, they pretend called. it's not that. And then at the end, they're like, well, it was that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sure. dude, you don't have to tell me that shit. We used to watch like. I remember watching with my parents in season four or five. We were still pretty freaking into it. And that's when they had started doing time travel and it was getting pretty out there. Mm -hmm. But the acting was still great. And it was still like this fun, mysterious, sci-fi-esque sort of whatever thriller show. Yeah. And then the last season, it just got worse and worse because you realized there was less and less episodes for them to answer all the stuff they still needed to answer. Yeah. At least touch on. And most of which they didn't. They never explained what the smoke monster was. So they said it's a protection system for the island. Okay, but what is it actually? Like smoke monsters, nanites or something? I heard people <laughs> say, but they never really. Yeah, you know, and I don't know stuff like that. They they tied up a couple things, but they had I don't even remember now. There was the man in white and the man in black or something. There was all these interconnected stories. Those kind of things, they just get down like a spiral and like, I don't know what uh, to do here. I was talking to someone about Lost the other day, though. There was a point where it was like the best thing on television. Like it, the end, the season, peak Lost. Season was, one. Well, season, no, no, no. I'll take it further than that. Season, they the first few seasons were great. The first season really sucks you in. The cliffhanger at the end. But season two premiere, when you finally see what's in the hatch and they're playing play your own kind of music by Mamas and the Papas. And uh, it's, you see it's this guy and he's been pressing this code. You know, remember Desmond? Like, what a good twist. And it was just such a, I don't know, that whole season was pretty great too. And then uh, the end of season three, which I think is kind of poetic because it was the like halfway point of the whole series, was the first time that by the end of the episode, you realize that these little cutaways they've been doing are not from the past, like they've been doing, but actually from the future. Mm -hmm. And that, oh shit, some of them made it back from the island and they're the Oceanic Six now. And that was like, I still had so much hope for it at that point and yeah. then it just kind of yeah it got weird and last season was a fucking dumpster fire I, I honestly think the shows last too long like in the UK they get you get a se a series like one season yeah. and if you're lucky you get two and it's kind of cool because then you got to have good stuff but like in the North America you just have TV shows that go on like Grey's Anatomy has been on for 400 years it's like 21 seasons or something like her crazy. granddaughter is one of the doctors in the show I <laughs> like I don't care I didn't like that show w to begin with like <laughs> who's, who's okay who's well I, got, I gotta come clean like I watched Nine seasons of it, probably. Dude, do you have a job? Like, what, how are you watching? Uh, I used to work stuff? security overnight, so I had time to watch. No, but it was more, um, I watched it. It was like people I was in relationships with. Yeah, yeah. I started watching it when it came out. And uh, coincidentally, it was also Lost premiered after Grey's Anatomy or something like that. Because okay. Grey's Anatomy had been out for one season prior. So Thursday night or whatever it was, you just... Well, my girlfriend at the time was already a fan of Grey's Anatomy. And then after that ended, she was like, oh, there's this new show coming on. And I ended up becoming a fan of that. But then that transferred over because I think I watched one or two seasons when we were together for a couple of years. And then when I eventually met my ex-wife and we got married and had kids and all this stuff really quickly... I I got her into it and then and there was a um, Jesus this is how that, that, not ashamed to admit my femininity I am if that's a feminine show but I even watched like five seasons of the spinoff Private Practice oh my god Kate Walsh oh my god so that was a great show honestly do, it was a do you know how much <laughs> stuff I've watched over the years that I wouldn't have watched if I wasn't married. Well, there you go. Yeah. Well, Karen, thank you Karen for coming Moore. to my rescue yeah. there. Yeah. We, all, we all do this, a, right? A smart well, man goes 0%. I got to yeah, say, though, <laughs> I, never, I never, for the record, said that I didn't enjoy watching Grey's Anatomy or Private Practice. Oh, yeah. Well, they were pretty good. And yeah. that that's true for me, too. I mean, over the years, I've seen a lot of stuff I would never have picked for myself. And I go, that was actually pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. But 
as we've gotten older, my wife has decided there are certain things she's no longer going to watch. Anything with an explosion, anything with firearms, anything with <laughs> someone being mean to someone else. Mom, being did, wait, if you're watching someone. a movie and you're like half an hour in and, and someone pulls out a gun, and his mom just like, all right, I'm out of here. She, she, she turns her face away. If, if two people are fighting, she doesn't want to see violence anymore. Wow. Which I totally respect that. Yeah, that's pretty like but that Buddhist. Means I don't get to watch. This. <laughs> yeah, that's why. That, that's why you need separate rooms. And but separate I want to watch John Wick Eight. Man, when the basement's redone and I get that big TV. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. I uh, we we've got a couple of those, but my my wife and I have very similar and impeccable taste in entertainment. So we we tend to like watch something, and we can almost like look at each other twenty minutes into a show and be like, "We're not gonna watch this show. It's shit." Yeah, or whatever. Um, and there's some shows, you know, where people are like, but season three gets really good. I'm like, I'm not watching two shit seasons <laughs> like, yeah, I'm not. To, <laughs> to watch something that you How think much might time be time reinvesting, yeah. yeah. And then oh, you're going to hate yeah. that person if you get to season three and you're like, yeah, this is still not for me. Oh, my God. I guarantee you, <laughs> I've never done it. Just but, wasted. But, like, yeah, yeah. I'd be angry for sure. Um, but uh, what were we talking about? Grey's oh, yeah. Uh, the, her name was Addison, right? On yeah. Private Practice. Yeah, yeah. Did you know that that was one of the top 10 girl names? Baby, you think because of that names? show? 100%. Because all the moms were staying home watching it while they were pregnant? Uh, um, uh, that like, was true to our situation. I love watching point. those lists because there's always something. Some pop culture. Some like, pop culture yeah. where you're like, you know that kid's going to be like resent you in 15, 20 years when they're like, you named me after. Well, and interestingly, there's also shit. names that can come up through pop culture that then make a, a otherwise usable name like null and void where everyone's like, I ain't touching that. Yeah. Like if you, I, I don't know if I've talked about this before, but uh, there were, I looked at one of those lists, but it went all the way back like a hundred years or whatever. And sometime in the thirties, the most popular boy's name was Kermit. Is that but, right? Oh yeah. my God. But, but once the Muppets came along, that name's fucking done for. Yeah. No one's going to name their kid Kermit. You would be doing them a disservice. You're going to be a little frog boy their whole life, you know? We can't call him Kermit Hitler. That would be terrible. <laughs> yeah, Adolf was one of the other big names yeah. in the 30s. Yeah, not so popular. It was trending if, they, yeah. if I don't know, they probably this is my say son, that Mussolini then. Jones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so which names now are going to be like outlawed based on other people's bad behavior, I wonder, you know? Uh, I don't think Donald will be very popular. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I was fishing my brain here for like other people who've had like scandals and controversies and stuff recently. Oh, geez. I don't know. Puff Daddy. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. What's going on with that? He got raided. I heard that. But yeah, why? I don't know. Uh, for crimes against people, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty broad. Yeah. Well, he's uh, these, these like I, uh, I'm not I don't know if it's drugs or guns or I think it's. There, All I, of the there, above. there's like human trafficking parts of it. And stuff. Oh, Jesus. So, yeah. He's been doing some bad stuff. Yeah, because this is coming at the same time as this Nickelodeon bombshell where apparently there was all this hush money and a lot of child weirdness going on. Definitely. Yeah, Puff yeah. Daddy stuff seems to be rooted in, uh, like you were saying, some trafficking stuff, but it's a, you know, sexual misuse and abuse and things like that. It turns out he uh, was a bad boy. Yeah. <laughs> For life. <laughs> Yeah, but now he's going to go to death row. Dude, you get, you <laughs> he's give, switching record labels. Yeah. No. <laughs> I don't know. You go a uh, dark, I guess. You, you give people like uh, unencumbered amounts of money for two decades and they a lot of them just do he's, crazy his shit. His whole career has been rife with like uh, this kind of shit though, right? Yeah, He, he got sure. uh, in trouble once for having a handgun in a nightclub. I don't know if he fired it off or something with J-Lo, I remember when they were dating. Puff Daddy uh, dated... He's done some shit uh, over the years. He the dated J-Lo, yeah. I think fundamentally... Take that, Ben Affleck. <laughs> if, you're, if, you're, if you're a person with $100 million and you made it, you made $100 million and people are like, oh, it's going to go to your head and you're crazy because you have all this money. You were crazy crazy because you wanted a hundred million dollars like you're driven to to be like hyper successful so you're you're focused yeah, but for on some path. people that's that's coming from a place of um you know feeling uh, insecure like they need that i don't think know so that they'll be safe you know i don't think so i don't think a lot of people that are insecure is like mm, maybe if i had a hundred million dollars <laughs> people would like me they're like out of my way well PMs, no i have heard I'm people say that like if they grow up in poverty that that's something that they are like oddly driven to attain when they're uh, older yeah, because they, sure. they don't feel safe they don't feel sturdy like but that's any, you know. but that's not the like psychopathy version like there's yeah. people that are like i didn't have anything and i want better for my kids by the way i'm convinced generationally like if you look at kids these days and stuff with iPads and everything. I think every generation wants better for their kids and then they resent them for it. Yeah. They're like, 
I didn't have an iPad on a plane when I was a kid. <laughs> like, I, and the kid's like, well, I don't care. Like, well, I do have one. Like, don't, yeah, you're... iPad's pretty sketchy though because I mean, I had a, someone telling me the other day that they, and it was somebody who was I think twenty five or something, and she was like, oh yeah, I have a cousin who's five right now or whatever from this that generation, whatever year that is, um, five years ago, I guess. <laughs> but uh, they can't even watch a movie or a show. She said, like, because of their iPad. You know YouTube uh, shorts and and TikTok and all that that they just, I don't know about that. Like I well, this person was saying specifically their cousin. She's like, no, my cousin can't even watch a full movie because she's just like, I need to something more rapid. Yeah, I mean, there, fire, there's you know? a lot of there's a lot of ADHD in the water too. So, um, but no, <laughs> so I, I've never noticed kid like my son and his buddies. You can put them down in front of something, taking them to movies and stuff. And I think it's we have to engage the kids in the way that we probably would have done more because a lot of the parents are just as guilty for being on their phones, right? Yeah, hundred percent. But like, I mean, in situationally, like, I'm sorry, I grew up on planes where there was nothing. Yeah, like, I, I'd be on a seven hour plane. And there's a TV uh, the size of a shoebox, 80 feet away from you. Yeah. And it plays, and they go, it's movie time. And they play whatever movie, and you go, oh, I hope this is great. Yeah. And, and then you sit there, the same and the rest of the time, you're looking at the back of a, of a chair. I would have killed for something. Yeah. Well, I mean, I probably had a Game Boy or brought, like, a comic book or something. Uh, those didn't exist? A comic <laughs> book? How long is it you read a comic book? <laughs> like, well, no, I mean, like, a graphic novel. 20 like minutes, a, and then you're like, little oh, trade sure. paperback, you know? Yeah, sure, you could read and stuff, but I mean, it's like it's such a godsend to have that kind of stuff to distract yeah. you when you're doing doing i i wish i could be put in like coma for 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 traveling like they're just like here oh just you're, like you're out and you. then and then you wake up and you go yay yeah but but the second best thing is being able to watch a christopher nolan movie on a plane because <laughs> it's six hours long and you're like i don't understand it but it passed the time for sure well, do you travel a lot or no? Um, I I did when I was young, for sure. These days, yeah, a couple times a year. My family lives in Europe, so I try to go visit them and stuff. Yeah, I mean, like with technology, definitely on planes and stuff, it's advantageous. And I think there's so many things about our current, like social media and smartphones and all that augmented reality, whatever you're into, that there's so many cool and sometimes really positive things that as a society, even for all the probably largely negative shit that it brings, we haven't been able to be like, all right, cut the cord. And I don't think we're going to. And it's just going to be whatever it is. I you know? I got to have faith in people being able to be like, I'm going to go outside and like play soccer. There's like, some of that for sure. You see that out there. But I think more and more people are getting sucked into just like... Yeah, like know. the TikTok, Instagram loop where you just sit there and... Just the brain dead. Like everyone yeah. knows what we're talking about because it's happened to all of us at one point or another. Yeah, but at the yeah. same time, I mean, like what did people do before that? They, they'd play cards. They do... Like, yeah. you're, you're, it's a way to pass the time. Well, I have, there's apps, a lot of, I have apps that help me too that I genuinely appreciate having, yeah, you know? for sure. It's how you... It's a tool, man. It's like yeah. it's a it, hammer works well on a nail. If you hit yourself in the head with it, it's not good. Yeah, idea. it's just... It's a tool that takes so much self-discipline in a way that it doesn't take a lot of self-discipline to not hit yourself in the head with a hammer. <laughs> Maybe it does. I mean, unless you've got a thing for that. Yeah. But um, yeah, but speaking of like useful, this is actually a good transition because I wanted to talk about hobbies and see if you've got any new Hammering ones. myself in the head. <laughs> <laughs> just to feel something. Just, just, I would have like also accepted getting hammered. Yeah, that could have been I, what you I, refer to I, it I as. I do that as well. You guys want to get hammered? Yeah. <laughs> People show up, they're like, this is not what we were expecting. <laughs> yeah. Same result though. Yeah, Brain damage. Basically. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to talk about a hobby that I've been getting into because I, I don't think I talked about it when uh, it would have been weird to talk about during the whale episode, although it is language. So maybe I did, but uh, my dad can tell me, but it's been 60 days now, I think basically that I've been going straight where I've been practicing Esperanto. Okay. Cool. Do you know Esperanto? Yeah. I don't know it to speak it. No, but I'm not one you're of aware of it. Four people that <laughs> two million it. worldwide. You son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, I was not even aware of what it was until I heard a podcast on it, like, I guess two months ago, because I pretty much downloaded that Duolingo. Was like, the, the podcast in Esperanto? And you're like, no. what is going on here? I better learn. No, I got so a I sampling. I, I got a sampling of words and they kind of just broke down the structure, the history behind it, which I think is very interesting for people mm. who don't know. It's uh, a language that was constructed in the late 1800s by a dude whose goal was basically to try to create a worldwide language that would help people 
get along better because we're all speaking the a, same thing. A lingua franca, as they're known, which is weird because I guess that just means a that sounds French, French language or something. <laughs> yeah. like, okay, which uh, is actually in Esperanto language is lingua. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, no, um, I've, I've learned a lot. Honestly, I feel like I can't the, hold a whole it's, conversation. It's but. deeply ironic that you speak English, which is the lingua franca of the of the world, more or less. And yeah. you're like, I better learn this one that <laughs> many fewer people speak. <laughs> I know. I've I've thought about this a few times in my head. Like, why am I doing this? I have this app. I could learn literally any other language. Yeah. Would be more beneficial to learn. Um, and it's twofold. Partially it's fringe. I think I've always been like that, that if someone's like, who's your favorite X-Men, I'm not going to say Wolverine. I'm going to pick the one, no, oh, Bishop or somebody, you know, he's, th- you know, Bishop. What? <laughs> Dazzler. Dazzler. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I, I just, there was an appeal there to be like, I don't know. I like to root for the underdog. So it's like, oh, nobody's loving this little yeah. side language here. I mean, it's getting yeah. ignored. And then the second I, uh, reason that I picked it, and I think also largely why I've stuck to it, is because it was designed to be very easy to digest and, and yes. learn very quickly. They say yeah. you can learn it like, I don't know, three times faster than most languages or something like that. So yeah. you feel like, uh, you know, a sense of accomplishment a lot faster, and that propels you to keep wanting to do it. And Yeah, it's cool. You know? uh, good for you, man. I mean, some people speak Klingon, some people speak yeah. El- Elvish, like those, maybe at Comic-Con, those are useful, but like they're... Um, I don't know, Klingon dirty talk during in the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, didn't they have to kill each other to have sex or like f- they fought some sort of them? praying mantis shit yeah. yeah that's crazy um yeah i mean english the reason english is kind of easier to learn and i've heard people say english isn't easy to learn it is it's it's probably impossible there's a lot to, of exceptions to the rule though and english is probably impossible like to master unless yeah. you're born into it because there's so much stuff that nuance it, yeah and if you said like uh what does that mean? You, it's hard to describe what things mean sometimes. Yeah. Like, I know what the sentence means, but I couldn't. You get that when a three year old asks you a question sometimes where yeah. you're like, oh shit, no one's ever asked me. I, like, I've really enjoyed being a parent that way because my son, especially when he's younger, would be like, what's that? And I go, I don't know. Yeah, it makes you have no to idea. be like, oh, I've never really thought about that. Yeah. <laughs> and I go, forget it. I'm not going to look it up. <laughs> it's not forget important. that exists. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I just think it's also good to keep trying new stuff like that too that was one of the things when i was feeling down yeah that was something that i that and and exercise is like i work out pretty much every day now especially since i felt like i was kind of getting a little bit out of shape um do you work out with like old outdated weights that don't no no no, i've got (laughs) the highest ones i have are like 15 20 pounders that i'll switch in or whatever but just a lot of um you know full body dumbbell routines hit workouts or whatever i'm just trying to do at least half an hour a day, but pretty intense where I got to be sweating by the yeah, end. Yeah, that's good. That's but I, it's one of those things I can count on that'll always make me feel if I even if I'm feeling shitty, I'll feel at least a little bit less shitty, you know? Yeah. And the the language stuff was kind of like that, too. I felt like it was always still giving me like a positive little boost. And it's a, a funny sounding language, though, because mm-hmm. um, and it's kind of like Portuguese and English mashed together. Or it's a bunch of them. Like as soon as you think it sounds kind of Latinish, uh, Latina, Latinx, Latinx, <laughs> whatever that is, um, none, none of of those is the correct answer. <laughs> as soon as it starts sounding Hispanic, um, you get like a word that sounds kind of German or something like thank you is Duncan. Yeah. You know, but then estas is in there a lot. And but the weirdest sounding words is um when you get into pluralizing a word, it uh will have like a J at the end, which is like a oi sound. So like uh the the funny one that I always remember, it's like many yellow flowers, uh multoi Flavoy floroi. So like it sounds a little goofy, you know? Yeah. And it sounds like it doesn't incorporate any Asian languages whatsoever. Oh yeah, that's true. I guess it's not fully inclusive. It's a language for everyone, minus Asia. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I, I would argue those have got to be some of the hardest languages to learn because they have like volume differences in the way that they oh have my to God, deliver dude, it. The know? other day, my son's telling me he goes, uh, he goes. Uh, in uh, in Hong Kong, they speak uh, I think Cantonese, and I go, I think that's right. Yeah, and he goes, or Mandarin but there's a, a he goes, there's a, also Mandarin, and uh, and I go, yeah, there's the two big ones. And I go, but did you know this that they can they they're written the same way, and like the the language is the same, but they're they're spoken differently. Really, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I didn't know that. And uh, and my son goes, oh, 
So in Cantonese, when you say hi, it means bye in Mandarin. I go, no, it's not opposite. <laughs> it's not bizarro world. <laughs> it's just the opposite language. <laughs> How would the Kids country so stay funny. together? Yeah. <laughs> China's having some difficulties because everything this guy says is the exact opposite to this guy. Oh, oh my oh, God. That's tough. Backwards land. Um, well, do you have any new hobbies that you've been getting into? Jeez. Um, I, well, c- let's come back to that. I don't know. Yeah, I floated um, around. I've cu- I've tried to become a, uh, a like fix it handyman. That okay. didn't that didn't go well. I was gonna say I haven't really taken that plunge on too many occasions. I, I hate it, dude. Yeah, I like, love just calling someone and getting them yeah. to do it. I don't like doing that either. But I uh, well, I don't love spending the money or yeah. you know. But I we had usually to, they're gonna do a better job. We had to get our furnace looked at, and and I was like, oh, I'm watching the guy. I, I had to call a guy because it's a furnace. I'm yeah. like, I don't know what to do. I did I did all the things that you want I could find house. on YouTube and stuff. And uh, and so I call the guy and I'm kind of standing there and he's like, oh, I've got to take this panel off. And I'm like, I'm just going to watch him flick a switch and then charge me 300 bucks. Yeah. And then, uh, and it's by the hour or whatever, right? So I'm like, oh, this guy's probably going to stay longer to charge us more, right? So I, I'm like, uh, what's going on? He goes, oh, I got to go to my van and get something. And then check on something. I'm like, this is bullshit, dude. <laughs> like, just charge me the extra money and flick the switch. Like, come yeah, on, at man. least leave. But, yeah, we have a gas. We have gas for our stove, which I can't. I hate because I know it's probably not that difficult, but you have to get a ticketed gas guy to do anything. Mm. So we had we changed our stove once, and uh, you have to give a guy three hundred bucks to basically put the hose tinker with it for five seconds yeah connect the hose and then check with with bubbled soap to see if it's got a leak and i could do that myself Mm. but then it has to be a certified technician or whatever yeah because then you go to bed and you're like i hope the house doesn't blow up because i'm not a certified technician but i mean more power to the gas guys they went to school for it or whatever right they're blowing up yeah (laughs) hopefully Uh, well let's talk about dune dudes Dune dudes, yeah. Because I saw that. Uh, I didn't even know if you had a YouTube channel. I couldn't remember. And then I saw you posted a video on your Facebook. Yeah, I do have a YouTube channel. And I, ha- I haven't done anything with it since about the pandemic, probably. Yeah, oh, that's right. I remember watching some videos of you playing piano in some of your comedy sets. Yeah, and- those uh, those are pre-pandemic. I recorded sets and stuff. But I did uh, my Tavis Talk series. Which, oh, yeah. Which uh, I, was really fun. It was like where I, w- I was asking people to give me advice letters. And then I would give them... Bad advice, basically, but then just no one sent me any letters. So I'm like, oh, I guess I, <laughs> dude, I guess that's tell me about it. it. Yeah. I do this contact info at the beginning of every episode. Yeah. And if we have not had a lot of emails. If anyone out there needs to chat, to call a Tavis Talk at Gmail or whatever. <laughs> yeah, and I'm being honest. If people hear me saying to contact this show, like seriously, we, we had this whale expert on that was so fun and fascinating, and I'm so excited to do one with the dinosaur expert from the museum next week. So if you know anybody who if you're in the ottawa area especially but you know anyone who you think would just be a really entertaining interesting person for me to chat with like definitely get in contact with me you gotta get the Krat brothers on man <laughs> yeah it's a, it's a are they food for life ontario based they guys? live in ottawa yeah what yeah no way yeah they're american but they moved here like a decade ago i'll to totally reach out to show. those guys yeah I love those dudes. I grew up with Zabumafu, and by grow up with, I mean, I was in university <laughs> watching it. <laughs> well, it's still a part of your life. You're still growing. Yeah, for sure. I, but I love that. And I watched Kratz, uh, Wild Kratz with my Yeah, I've seen both of those shows. Years. Maybe not every episode, but I was definitely... Yeah. Uh, they had like a lemur or something as a as a logo. Yeah, that was, that was or whatever. that was Zabu. That's Zabu. Lemur. Okay, yeah. yeah. Sorry, it's been a while. <laughs> Not for me. I'm Not still watching. <laughs> Got him on VHS. Yeah. No, I uh, yeah. We when I was in university, we stuck a coat hanger in the back of a TV and turned it into an antenna and got like four channels, and one of them was TV Ontario, and yeah. I watched everything on TV Ontario. They it, had. It um, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't they have uh, how it's made or something back um, in the day? I don't know if they had that on it maybe i'm wrong yeah um could have sworn when i was a kid i used to watch that sometimes did you see like, this is hell did you see during me. the pandemic do you see those uh the touring tripping they called them tripping the rito and tripping the niagara no oh my god dude it's like a four hour documentary where it's just a camera basically on the front of a barge and it f- goes the entire length of the rito canal 
Wow. And you're just watching it. And if you're tripping, it's... It's just fantastic. supposed to be like, yeah, I was going to say for... And then they do a or... sides and stuff where they go over here and they're like, this is a was a tower they used in the war of whatever. But mo mostly it's just that. It's so good. This is the it's shore so of cool. Vanier. Yeah. If you see a man shitting, <laughs> yeah. look yeah. away. Yeah. And there's a, there's a groundhog up at the locks. Like, whoa, no <laughs> way, man. He's in the pipe. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no... Uh, okay, so you're planning on doing more videos and, and uploading more stuff? Oh, future? I don't know, maybe. So I had my YouTube channel, and my son, who watches lots of YouTube, he's got favorite YouTubers and stuff. He's like, he's like, a, Dad, will you will you record a YouTube video with me and stuff? I'm like, I don't know, probably not. And then, <laughs> but then uh, on on Monday, we uh, he he didn't go to school for the day. He just wasn't feeling it. He wasn't vibing school that day. And I go, okay, cool. So we went out to the Penny Dunes, which yeah, is near the, I've been there. the PN Sports Complex in Ottawa. Check it out. It's and pretty cool. Have you been there, Dad? I went on a uh, field trip with one of the kids. Yeah, it's uh, neat. I think it's it was Fiona when she was like grade it's two. It's a something. neat spot. It's like, it's this little like dune area, which has plants that only grow there in, and you're in the middle of. Yeah, it's like a little Ottawa. desert in the middle of yeah, Ottawa. So you get, yeah, you got these naturally creeping, formed, creeping little like cactus looking kind of plants. I think there's uh, bugs that are only there too, they were saying. Some yeah. sort of spiders and whatever. Yeah, it's really neat. Anyway, so so I'm like, uh, he, I don't know if he said like, let's record this. I go, okay. So I recorded a couple of things like, just say like, hi mom, we're at the dunes or whatever. Yeah. And I go, let's just take a bunch of videos and I'll see if I can put it together. And uh and and we went and did this trip and it's called dune dudes uh, uh it's on youtube dudes with a z go check it out <laughs> every every time we get another view he's like whoa we're up to like 42 four views, or views this is crazy yeah, yeah. so you no, know, it was a lot of fun will we do some other stuff probably if we have time i'll yeah goof around with the guy and do some fun stuff so this is like a, a fun side hobby yeah yeah i guess so yeah i'm a professional youtuber now yeah <laughs> well you gotta get that thousand subscribers or whatever yeah. before you can uh, monetize that ain't happening yeah well you never know my son's like oh dad you're up to on my other channel he's like dad you're up to 79 subscribers i go yeah he goes is that a lot i go it's not <laughs> it is not a lot <laughs> <laughs> to him that's like a big crowd of people though you know yeah, for sure um i want to ask you then what is your biggest parenting challenges that you've faced so far being too good at parenting man <laughs> uh, honestly you know uh challenges i don't know I've, it's always a challenge but it's a it's the but most something you found particularly fun. difficult maybe it was a stage in their age or... i hated the one i hated putting mitts on winter mitts on my son when he was about three <laughs> no, exactly. i have no, exactly. fucking hated if they have it. fingers you mean no and anything mitts it didn't matter because you put them on and they're like uh, and they shuffle them off it takes so long you're like do this with your hand okay push it in like this <laughs> and it takes so long to do and then the minute you put them on you go to put your boots on or whatever and they come right off and oh, stuff geez. like that was like i needed like zen meditation in those moments where it's just like all right you can make it through this because I could not stay. It was the most aggravating. I thought you were going to say the ones with the finger holes because I had that where you, I didn't the even, kid would put their, you know, index in the thumb spot. and I don't care. If they had pff, your fingers in the wrong holes, tough, tough shit. <laughs> <laughs> but no, your I, palms are warm. We didn't do those. We, we just had mitts forever. He was like, I wouldn't even bothered with gloves. That would have been an insane. Would been an insane thing. Um, I, I love, I'm trying to turn this into a bit kind of maybe, but, uh, I, one aspect about parenting that there's always aspects about parenting that you don't think about. Like you think till the the cows come home, like, oh, if this like situation, before you're a parent, you mean when you're thinking about, yeah, or even when you are, you're like, oh, if this ever happens, blah, blah, blah. There's always stuff that just comes out of nowhere. And it's funny a lot of times. Like I was walking my son and he was probably two and we were walking through the park and he just went like almost stepped in a big dog shit. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And I pulled him aside and I was like, oh, I'm responsible for two people not stepping in shit. <laughs> I was like, I didn't think that was the thing. Um, <laughs> but like, no, I, I really love this one. I was, uh, I was walking him somewhere and I was carrying his backpack and I was walking with him. And then his buddy's like, dude, come over to our house. And I go, okay. So I dropped him off there or whatever. And then I'm walking home by myself and I look at, I walk by this like window and I'm like, I'm a middle-aged man <laughs> wearing a child's backpack. Like, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's what not the, the coolest look. Yeah. And I have no kid. It was crazy. You didn't um, have to wear it. You could have just carried it. That would have looked uh, a little less weird. That would look like I robbed a child. <laughs> it's even worse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're both bad looks. Get some of that candy in there. Um, <laughs> but no, that I thought that was pretty funny. And, and uh, 
goofy, but uh, yeah, it's stuff like that where you don't you don't expect things to happen, and uh, and they do. And uh, my yeah. son during the pandemic, which is the worst time to have, for this to happen, he was um, he was scooting along and he tripped and he hit his chin and he. <laughs> Uh, cracked one of his teeth oh. and, and he sheared a piece of his tooth off. Like one of his teeth, he's like, oh, this one really hurts. I go, what about this one with the flappy tooth part? He didn't care. He didn't even notice it. It's a stuff. baby teeth at least, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was banking on. I'm like, don't worry, they'll come out. <laughs> <laughs> These are your, uh, you know, yeah. crash test dummy ones. Man, teeth are the weirdest. Like, it, we just take for granted that when you're seven or eight, you're like, uh, yeah, your teeth are gonna fall out. Oh, man. I, I, I relate to this so hard. But anyone that's, uh, like, if you were 12 and you had you'd be like what's wrong with you like go to the dentist. i would have started flossing crazy. way earlier i'm a religious flosser now every day every morning i don't do it at night maybe i should but always at morning yeah um i floss uh every time i go to started the, like I maybe the, in the last like 10 years or so i floss me. every time i go to the dentist uh, <laughs> i think that's a lot of people's approach <laughs> that was certainly my approach back in the day yeah and then and then they but when you get receding you. gum lines and stuff and and yeah. I'm, you know they'll be like oh yeah it looks like you've got some re recession here i'm like oh okay so uh yeah what can we do about that it's like oh no there's nothing you can do about that yeah i'm having a lot more moments like You're, that in my life where yeah. it's just like oh no this is you'll be dead soon don't worry about it <laughs> this is just your sunset moment another like step in that direction you know Dude, i went to uh, the i went to my dentist not that long ago and i had a, a like stand-in dental hygienist like she she was coming from another place i'd never met her before she keep was, in mind you talked about the dentist last time you were on here did i yeah what did i say you talked about like uh, them saying that you've got some bleeding and then you said oh this is different i don't, oh, okay, I don't think okay, i okay. talked about this and then, okay my bad um but they did do that again, by the way. <laughs> yeah, you, your, your joke last time was that uh, she said you've got some bleeding in the gums and you're like, oh, it's funny that doesn't happen yeah. unless they're being poked with yeah, a yeah. sharp metal stick Which, or something. I mean, that's, uh, I think other Okay, so it's not that. My bad, no, my bad. This, this woman just like misaged me well, like, which was f flattering, obviously. Oh, she thought you were younger? Yeah. Okay. She's like, she's digging around where my, my wisdom teeth used to be. And she's like, oh, there's some deep pits back here. You got to make sure to definitely clean those or that, like you could have problems. And I'm like, do I tell her that I haven't had my wisdom teeth in like 25 years? <laughs> <laughs> like, it hasn't been that much of a problem. And then she goes, you got to really take care of your teeth because in like 40 years or something, they could just fall out. <laughs> I'm like, like I'm like 85. I'll be in my 80s. I'm like I I don't fully expect to have teeth in my 80s. But anyway. you, I'm like, I'm I can okay. see that man. You have that face. You kind of are like um, Johnny Pemberton's like that. Justin Long is kind of like that. Where he could you could perpetually play the freshman year of college. Yeah. adult. Yeah, which I think is awesome. And yet I've never been cast as that. Isn't you that dye your hair or no? No. <laughs> Dude, can you imagine? Well, oh, I don't yeah. know. It could, it could just be yeah. a good dye job. No, I got well, a couple. I got a couple grays popping in and stuff. You got nothing from over here. You I, got chestnut. I, a year ago, uh, in when I was in Victoria, I went and bought a lottery ticket and I got carded. And I was like, "Come on, oh my! <laughs> you think I might be 18 <laughs> to buy like a scratch bingo yeah. or something?" Oh that was my god, nuts, dude. But, yeah, no, I get more gray every fucking week, man. That's honestly why I got to get back into podcasting more consistently. Because every time I take these two month breaks, I'm going to be like time lapsing, just aging. Yeah, big time. Um, and, and what I really hate is how it's not consistent. That's the thing that's bothering me about the whitening, as I'm calling it, is that like my beard, I've got like a big patch on the right side and then the left side, barely anything. Mm -hmm. So I just feel like there's more definition to that. But I don't want to dye it. I think a dyed beard looks usually pretty weird. Very. <laughs> you know? Especially if you don't dye your hair. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and time consuming. Like, I'm not going to be that I, guy. Dude, but. I used to work at this office, and I won't say who, where, but uh, one of the people that worked there, an older gentleman in his office, he he dyed his hair over the weekend or whatever. And uh, <laughs> and he basically looked like black paint on his head. Oh, God. And, and I, I walked into his office to drop something off, and I was like, oh. <laughs> and then I just backed out and then I, his assistant was there and I was like I just looked at her and she's like yeah <laughs> I don't know it was crazy and then I think he must have gone that day and got it fixed up or something but oh, it, it was like it didn't look so bad I would have taken the day off if I, yeah it was nuts dude like, Jesus. you can't just you it's can't like a just, bad toupee or something yeah for sure oh my god it was very funny yeah no I don't think I could ever do the dye it's just it seems like too much work more than anything too I mean, and gray is cool, and and it's it's distinguished. Like men Suppose. generally can grow 
gracefully, right? This barber I've been going to lately, he always tells me when, because I always say, like, oh, God, I look in the mirror like, shit, and didn't realize how many grays. And then he says it's good to go gray early and that gray hairs are stronger, like tensile strength. Yeah, of course he's going to tell you that. You <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. Hair. I don't know if he's just being a nice guy or what, but I'm like, really? It's good to be I thought ugly. they were weak because okay, they're not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, you know, what can we do? We're all getting older. It's de I definitely feel like I've been having more and more of those midlife kind of... I just turned 38 in December, so I'm feeling like... And Kelly turned 40, so I feel like I'm next up the escalator to get off at the top yeah. of the middle age zone. Yeah, and things happen. Like, it's, especially in, in stand-up comedy, when, when you hit 40... You're like, yay, now I can do the finger in the butt doctor joke. <laughs> and, and the one about like, I hurt myself doing nothing. Like, <laughs> you can do all these things, which is funny. There's a well of stuff, yeah. They're, they're like well-trod, hacky kind of premises, but they happen. They, they work happen for a reason, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know if they work all the time, but they, they're definitely... Well, if you make true, it your own. True to you life, know. yeah. I was... Um, I injured my hip actually doing something. I... I was doing yoga. And, <laughs> no, definitely not. Uh, I, I was doing yoga and uh, and like a couple days later, I just was like tweak and I'm like, oh my God, this kills. And it, it was like some of the most pain I've been in in my adult Damn. life for sure. But I went to this uh, dude and he kind of just like pulled pulled out my leg and stretched around and stuff. And it, it, after it killed 10 times more, it was a lot better. <laughs> But uh, I was, I tell this is a bit, a little bit, but uh, we were just chatting away and, uh, and he's like, basically he took a, a rope and he like roped around my waist and then around his waist. <laughs> and then he kind of just was like pulling my leg and stuff like this. Okay. And, uh, but he's like, uh, what do you do for work? And I go, oh, I'm a comedian. <laughs> and, and he's like pulling, he's like basically humping me a little bit. He's strapped and he goes, oh, do you think this will make it into your act? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> now it, it will. Might. <laughs> it might. Oh my God. <laughs> It's a weird, uh, unconventional approach he's got there. Yeah, it worked, dude. Oh my god, he's Felt like so a chiropractor better. kind of thing. He's a physiotherapist. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, he was a cool guy. Um, I felt guilty because he kind of fixed it the first time. And he's like, you're going to have to come back like for six weeks. And I felt guilty. So I went back one more time and mm. I was like, oh yeah, it still hurts. Especially if it's on anymore. benefits or something. Yeah. Like, yeah, I got it covered. So yeah. I didn't pay that much. I did for the it. same thing. I broke my but, arm and. Yeah, I went back like a, a year later. Times. You're like, oh, can you tweak it again? You well, know? I think honestly, the last couple of times I went back, it was just kind of like a relaxing experience because like it was still sore. And then somebody's just like heating it up with a hot towel and then like kind of massaging the area yeah. with like all the expertise of somebody in physio, you know. But eventually towards the end, I was in the same position where I'm like, they're telling me to do a follow up, and I know I don't really need to go. I'm back to normal. I'm lifting the yeah, same stuff. Yeah, it's like, stuff. The, like it's like at the dentist when they're like, "Remember to wear your mouth guard." I'm like, "I have a mouth guard." And they're like, yeah, we made one for you. Oh, okay. <laughs> they asked me last night. They go, "Are you still wearing that?" I go, "No, dear God, no. I don't know where that thing is." <laughs> you kidding me? How often did you go as a kid? To the dentist? This is what I've been asking people, because I, I want to survey this. I don't know. Two two times a year, maybe. Yeah. Oh know. shit. Okay, because I was gonna say as a kid, I thought we went once a year. Yeah, maybe it's one. Because now they ask, like the one we go to, they're always like six months after trying to get us to come back. And it seems like a little bit, maybe to me, just over the top. But yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe Dude, I was some of the insurance plans, like they used to support every six months and then they moved it to every nine months. Yeah, nine seems like meet them in the middle. I might do that more often. Every nine months. It's kind I of never go more than a year, but. Uh, so I get what? Every, so you get one three times every year and a half? Yeah. Wait. No, I find no, the no. dentist more and more <laughs> depressed. It was the cost. Like yeah. the insurance companies were too trying bad. to cut back the costs. Right? Yeah. Because people were screaming that the premiums were getting too high. So yeah. how do you do that? Well, do they really need to go every six months? And two dudes having coffee said, no. Yeah. And yeah. Then, then, then it was passed down. And, <laughs> and they're like, <laughs> now we can go to Bermuda this, yeah, this summer exactly. because we all just got that raise. Those guys are responsible for my teeth. I didn't know that. It's great. Um, yeah. I mean, I find the dentist kind of more and more depressing the older you get when you go. Because it's like, oh, shit, this is all chipped off from biting my nails or, and I, yeah. you know, or whatever. You uh, guys are fucking killing me here. <laughs> you know? what? Like, what? I listen to you guys rag on about getting old, and I'm sitting over here staring at 70, and I'm getting a little... I hate fed this up. argument. I, I, I mean, hate this argument because everyone can do that to someone younger than them. We could be to some well, teenager. Yeah. Seriously, and I'm going to be honest. I did not know you were an old man. <laughs> <laughs> How old do you think my dad is? 97 years yeah, old. Yeah, come no, up. No, no, yeah, yeah. yeah, I get it. I get it. But we're all yeah. different. We're all different things. Yeah, like, How old do you actually you think you is? This little thing, that little thing. You know, I had two crowns that snapped off at the 
damn gum line and the guy wants 16 grand to put in two implants i'm going forget that said, how much yeah 16 grand 16 geez. grand just get a couple yeah. chiclets and stick them Ugh. in every morning almost yeah, yeah. dennis the menace style uh, yeah. no but i yeah i had to go in i had to go in i i guess he's like what 65 you said you're pu pushing 70 or something uh, yeah, you're 68 now yeah <laughs> yeah, I'm 68. I'm yeah. looking at 69 he forgot. September. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, well, he's 30 years too. older than me. Yeah. That's what I remember. Yeah. When I turned 10, he turned 40. Right on. And... Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I was at the dentist and uh, and because I chipped every one of my eye teeth, like Jeez. my canines. They're just like the little Top parts and bottom, popped you mean? Yeah. No, like they, all four of them. Oh, Because okay. uh, just chewing on stuff. It just happens and they disintegrate. I have soft teeth and stuff. But yeah. Uh, it's, uh, I don't mind the dentist at all. The only, and I told my hygienist last time I go, I go, yeah, I, I've never cared about the dentist. It doesn't scare me. I've had, I've had fillings done with no, um, Yikes. no, uh, anesthetic, anesthetic stuff. It could, just doesn't hurt. It <laughs> just goes zing like that. Um, but I hate it as a kid getting the fluoride because they used to put those trays in your uh, teeth. Okay. I know what you're talking about. And they'd about. stick the hose down in your mouth. They're like, don't swallow it or anything. Yeah, and, and the I, suction's And you spend five minutes like trying not to barf because yeah. you're gagging. I'd be like, Rrr. that and was... And then you have to spit into the tube after and I don't suck care. I'll spit in the tube all the time. Like if... <laughs> Five minutes with something stuck down your throat, and they're like, "Please don't puke." Well, it's not really like, down your throat. It's like it's enough for me, man. You got I've those a, denture type things in, or whatever the mouth guard that tastes like bubble gum or whatever. I have a gag reflex that uh, reacts strongly to. Yeah, I don't think anyone really enjoyed that. No, the but, flavor was almost like a slap across the face. Yeah. Like, oh, grape flavor. That's gonna make this better. Yeah. Do you want <laughs> bubble gum? Like, yes. I want my torture to taste like bubble gum. Yeah, exactly. Sure. It's like a mind game at that point. Yeah. Speaking of old people, you're dead. Dad's really old. <laughs> Did you know that? <laughs> uh, we talked parenting, but let's switch it the other way. What's the word? And I, I, I swear to God, part of me is nervous that I asked you this in the first interview we did when right. episode 11. Yeah. But what's the worst thing that you put your parents through? I wasn't going to go back and watch a whole episode from. I don't think you would ask me that. The worst thing, I don't know. I'm probably just... I've asked someone that on this podcast before, for sure. Yeah. Um, probably. I'd have to extrapolate from what my son does is just the inane the gloves. The, no, <laughs> yeah, the fucking gloves. No, <laughs> the inane conversation, man. Like I'm, t I, I want to go to an audience and go, hey, after this comedy show, I want you all to call your parents and apologize for all the time you wasted telling them the dumbest stuff in the world. Like, Dad, did you know that this YouTuber uh, played what played a video game? And then it's like a, a so innocent ten though. minute sentence, and you're like, oh, what? At the end, you go, oh, is that right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Like, it's, uh, I find there's something beautiful. No, it's that, funny though. and stuff, but like sometimes you're just like half the stuff that comes out of kids' mouths, like not just my son, his all his buddies and stuff is just like the the dumbest, <laughs> most pointless stuff. Yeah, okay, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, no, I I do get what you're saying. I guess I'm just I'm more at a crossroads. Like you only have one child, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. And he you said he's eight almost or almost. Yeah. yeah okay. So he's about a year older than my youngest, but my oldest are 13 and 15 now. So it's like And they don't talk to dad at all. Yeah. Mm. I mean kind of. Well yeah. he'll hit the nail on the head there. <laughs> no. Yeah, I get that it changes. Um, just... Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm trying to embrace it too. I'm not like sitting around moping about it or anything. But for sure it does create a different um dynamic between me and my youngest who I do still have that ability to really reach out and connect with in a much easier way where it's not like, you know, they've just got such avid social lives and they've got their own priorities, rightfully so, you know, they're becoming yeah. little people now and it's, um, it's just an adjustment, but yeah. well, I'll still have a bath with my son once in a while. And he's like, are you coming in? I go, yeah, sure. Let's get in and have a bath together. And I assume by the time he's 20, he probably won't want to do that. <laughs> I was going to say, he may already be getting some sort of future damage mentally from that a little nah. or psychologically. I don't know. It depends on how he presents it, I guess. Um, yeah, no, I don't know. It's hard to tell. What did, what did I do that was wrong when I was a kid to my parents? I don't know. Probably being a jerk sometimes. Like, whatever. I, I, don't, I didn't, didn't get arrested or anything. I was going to say, yeah, being a jerk's pretty yeah. bland, nonspecific. Yeah. And yet I've done it for a long time. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I never burned the house down or anything like that. So I don't even know what I would say. I, I guess I would have to ask you what's the worst thing I ever put you through. 
Because I, I did a lot this, of stupid shit. This whole shit. conversation about being old, he's like, quit reminding me. This is the worst. <laughs> Th- 3 a.m. phone call to say, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm on some grass somewhere and I threw up and can you come and get me? And well, I don't even remember what that would have been. That was like in a, you're in the front of a school sort of two blocks away and you had just a big night out. <laughs> do, you, do you mean like he was on literal grass or he's like, yeah. dad, I'm high on grass. No, he was on literal <laughs> grass. Which school are we? talking about the the one uh the one with all the puke know, on the line i don't know the name of it it's uh like, was i alone yeah yeah i mean you were barely how did you call you school is this <laughs> it was the, the one that's on the cross street if you go all the way to the end of ogilvy nearly and and you turn left oh laverandre that like french school so, in the back no it's not just, on laverandre but it's, oh, oh oh just to interrupt this will be deleted from the final edit right? <laughs> 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 well no i'm just, yeah it's true this is just a detail that only i would care about but uh um, but you had a cell phone huh, at the time when you were an underage been, must drinker have, yeah 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 because i i mean realistically i started drinking when i was like 13 or something yeah me or too. 14 15 was more when i really got into it you know but um that would have been, I would have been 15 in 2000. Okay. So like de- not- definitely the late teens when I would have been drinking a lot in early 20s, cell phones were getting into the yeah. decent. Yeah. They you weren't, weren't smartphones you weren't, yet. But. You weren't 15. You were older than that. Like, Yeah. Well, I, I thought you were going to mention a completely different time where you came to get me for similar reasons, but well, that was there were so downtown. Many, there were so many times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I wouldn't, I'm not going to care about that unless I'm drunk at 3 a.m. I'll be like, sorry, bro. You got to... <laughs> You got to get an Uber or something. Yeah, and I don't no, think you, you guys you ever... Res- you respond to it as a parent. You go, yeah, I'll be right there. You yeah, know, of yeah, course, yeah. Of course, that's what you do. Yeah. And you guys were honestly pretty good for not like... And then you bring it up grounding 30 years later on a podcast. Super irrational. That's, you got to wait for your moment. <laughs> <laughs> but you never put me on blast that much like afterwards. Like I would definitely have a talk about it and maybe some restrictions, but I never felt like... No, we tried never like to to blow up because it's pointless, right? It's just yeah, going to cause alienation. Yeah. You, yeah, you just have to like let it ride and Honestly, and we, dude, like uh, a lot of my a lot of my audience members are young students, like college students, and I ask them like if I'm going to do jokes about drugs, like you guys do drugs or anything, and almost none of them do. And I get it. I was thinking about it. It's like like drugs when we were young were like the worst that you like you could OD if you did heroin. Yeah. And you're like I've, I'll never see heroin in my life. I'm not like it's, do that. It's, it yeah. doesn't. It's not in my circle. I'd have to go w- like somewhere else to find it. But nowadays, like every drug has the potential to kill you, basically. So I think if there's kids, fentanyl in it or something. Yeah. You mean? yeah. 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 And, well, and, not in like weed. They can they can put fentanyl in anything. Maybe in one of these little capsule things, but that's I, full I of fentanyl. They're not gonna, <laughs> they're not gonna sprinkle fentanyl all over the actual flour if you're just rolling joints. No, 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 no. I but think they, you're right. But yeah, a lot of like stuff that you might have been like, oh, I'll try that if you're an experimental young twenty something. Yeah, try ecstasy or cocaine or something like that. Uh, yeah, and now you're just it's not be worth dead. it. No, like, it definitely is. And, and like if drugs remained the same as they'd always been, and and I would never tell my kid like, don't do drugs. Don't. Do, that's the worst thing. No, ever. just stick to weed, alcohol, and mushrooms first yeah for sure pretty much all at the same time that would be my every advice. day no every like night. all in moderation yeah. which everyone who dabbles in you know struggles at yeah, a different yeah, degree for sure. with that but. but it's just like it's so dangerous now man there's so much stuff like you hear about the teenagers they're like oh they went to a house party and died and yeah like, that's fucked up man that's so, insane yeah can we just have good time drugs like we used to <laughs> yeah but i feel like even when we were uh smoking weed and doing shrooms and stuff in in high school that our parents were saying like oh can't we just get like the old garbage bag weed back that that was just a nice mellow buzz i can't yeah. smoke this hydroponics yeah. sure you had to smoke a pound of it to get high but yeah it was good yeah. but they liked that because it was like having a coors light <laughs> instead of I, taking a shot of tequila you, you know what i miss about legal weed be, like weed being legal is the my favorite thing of all time which was like when you came home reeking like weed and you go no no i was smoking american cigarettes <laughs> <laughs> i don't know that, that i ever a, used that that one. was the thing that people would say all the time when i was growing up i'm like what what te- what what parent is going to be like? Oh, okay, that's fine. <laughs> Hemp cigarettes would have made more sense. Yeah. Like, oh no, they don't have any active ingredients. Or just in like, it. no, no, I was definitely smoking weed. That's why my eyes are red and stuff. And yeah, like, my know, mom just... always knew. She she would come up to me and sniff me all weirdly, which like when I was high would trip me out. Yeah, she'd come up like yeah. like she was a Rottweiler or something, and then she would just go like, "You smell like a skunk." 
I know what you've been doing or that kind of thing. Yeah. You know, I made my son, mom sound like an evil Disney villain. Yeah. There. <laughs> but um, meanwhile, you're like hands deep in Doritos. You're like, what? No, <laughs> not me. <laughs> you know, it's funny. There was a period um, where I don't know what age I was sometime in high school, though, where we were getting baked often, me and my friends, and we didn't have money or access to like harder drugs often. So there was a time where we would have, I would have people over and like my parents would be there because we'd be like, oh, yeah, we're just watching a movie. We'd show up super high. And then we would have a uh, Neo Citrin, you know, Neo Citrin. Yeah, yeah. And it makes you kind of sleepy. There's something <laughs> in it. That you, yeah. Uh, I don't know what the drug is. Maybe you would know, dad, but. No, but uh, so we would just be like, yeah, we all got a bit of a sore throat or whatever that's supposed to be for. And then we would just like, I'm pretty sure my mom would come down and like three out of the four of us would just be asleep. And that was like fun to get high, <laughs> drink Neo Citrin and pass. Oh, wow. Like, yeah, we're rebels in yeah. the Beacon Hill. You grew up in a really fun area <laughs> when you're not puking on the lawn of the I school. just completely I mean, forgot about that yeah. and it came back to me. You, you know? guys want to go over to Oliver's house and do some sit? <laughs> Let's do some sit. <laughs> and you sit while you do it yeah. so it's like a, a yeah. dual meaning I, I imagine if I was stoned Neo Citrin would taste really good yeah it was pretty decent yeah. it has kind of a weird taste to it but I haven't had one in years but it definitely makes you feel like this kind of like sleepy cozy kind of vibe yeah, yeah. that okay. it makes it dude hard. when I'm on the couch and I'm You're like fighting having, that which yeah, makes yeah. you feel high that's yeah. kind of the, the <laughs> idea <laughs> you should try fentanyl then I think it sounds exactly <laughs> like that it's like basically Neo Citrin for adults oh uh, uh, doctor not recommended um, no yeah like I I uh, one of my problems with weed is like I'll take a bit of edible and I'll watch a movie and then I'm just like I'm gonna eat everything in the house and it's it's great but then the next day I go oh, I gotta go run, run around the block yeah. or something. but sometimes I just have like hot water and I'm just sipping hot water and I'm like this is the best hot water I ever had in my life <laughs> that's a little plain for me <laughs> yeah. but green tea I, well, I didn't know about this neo citrin thing man I didn't know you're you never had down. that no I, I, I just didn't know that it would affect you because I'm not a small child, basically. <laughs> yeah, well, I was exactly probably 14 <laughs> or something. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah, it's all the, trick all, of the trade. All the things you try to do, like, uh, like, did you hear you can get high doing this? And like, not, none of them two, two tablespoons of nutmeg apparently can induce some sort of uh, hallucinations or something like that. Yeah. I think there actually is truth to that one, though. Yeah, because have you ever tried to swallow two tablespoons of nutmeg? Well, you could put it in a liquid form, and I think it would still have the effect. There's a, I, like an overdose amount. I think nutmeg. it would. Yeah, come. It's, it's toxic. Too much yeah. nutmeg is yeah. definitely toxic. So, yeah. but it would make some people. I think did it to. Or you is on it? The, on the Let's way go to, to the kitchen and get some. <laughs> some people used to say, <laughs> used to say, smoke banana peels. Like you would roast them a certain yeah. way or something. I've never seen anyone actually you know, try that. How hard I don't think. have to be for sure. Yeah. Yeah, um, we and I remember some people in um, high school had cloves. You know, remember cloves? The clove cigarette. Yeah, they were like yeah. little cigarettes beedies, like that big. Yeah, beedies or beanies yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Those things were fucking. They gross. were so gross. <laughs> it is <dude>. terrible. Yeah. <laughs> just smoke a cigarette that's like, like a normal. That's person. like vaping, just water. Oh, it's it was like worse oh, it's than just that. bad for you. It's like still, yeah, there's no effect. Like at least with <laughs> cigarettes, you're like getting nicotine and yeah. some other weed. You're getting high, but like yeah, I'm smoking cloves. How does that make you feel? Terrible. Yeah. What does it taste like? Yeah. Like shit. Yeah. It's fucked. Keep yeah. it up. Yeah. I but they're cheaper. I never. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was not buying them at all. Oh man, that's funny. Um, okay. Well, we I think we kind of talked about your future future aspirations. You were saying you wanted to do more touring and stuff. And, yeah. Um, sure. Are you maybe wanting to record an album? Is that in the? Because I honestly think you're one of the funniest people that I've ever seen do comedy. If I see you're on the bill, even if everybody else bombs, I still think people are going to see a good show if you're hosting. You're going you. to bring it back around, and, and you're so good at, like... And that's the know. album I want to record. Is me, you me being funny and a bunch of other people bombing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Boy, uh, he seems pretty good compared to them. Yes. I just honestly right. think you have the caliber to be like a JFL type comedian, which we also have to touch on that that's yeah. canceled this year because it's another thing I really wanted to mm -hmm. discuss. But well, thank um, you. I appreciate that. I, I don't know. I've thought about it. I mean, I don't have my, I really want to get my set to length, like, I would like to do a short headline set in the near yeah, future. Yeah, like a half an hour or something? Yeah, a half hour, 35 you could or something. Yeah. really get traction um, with that if you recorded it and put it online, I think. Yeah, I mean, a lot of... 
I don't know. A lot of my best shows are pretty all over the place, like lots of crowd interaction and stuff. And that I'd, could still be a thing, and oh then yeah, you just for take sure. a bigger chance. But yeah. then do you film three or four of them? Maybe yeah, even if they're wildly different. Yeah, from it's each definitely other. it's definitely on the radar to yeah. record in the future. Um, and there's people in the city that are in the con, uh, Ottawa comedy community that would totally help with like all the logistics of like you know Scott Ross and Brown. He's yeah. Camera dude oh yeah, I know, and, I, know, I know a lot of guys. Yeah, uh, I actually was talking to one of the guys who was recording. Um, I hosted a couple of recordings last year, and uh, and I'm like, oh man, do you want me to get these? So I I hosted a th recording for JFL during the pandemic. Oh, I remember this. Um, and beforehand, they're like, we want the room sound, so uh, we want we, so we can overlay it. So if something doesn't go well, we can add, like juice it up, add yeah. some laugh track to it. And so before um, before the show, I was like, hey guys in the crowd, uh, let's pretend we just heard something really funny. And they go, and they're really good at it. It's crazy. Like you can just ask a crowd, like start laughing. They'll go. <laughs> oh, weird. You're know, like this is kind of psychopathic. <laughs> yeah, a little creepy. And then, but we did some other ones. I go now laugh and then trail it off a little bit so we can fade in. And then how about like a ha, huh, like a big pop? And they just went for it, right? So we got crazy. all these sounds that they could overdub, and they did a good job because I listened to the recordings and I was like, that sounds a lot better than when I heard it live for sure. Oh, uh, it was um, pretty weak. It, no, they were good. They just weren't like they sweetened the sound. They made it a little more like. If you listen to an Ooh, actual man. album that's really funny without any of the crowd noise, it sounds like someone's bombing, mm. no matter how funny it yeah, is. Yeah, you should have some audience yeah, you reaction. Have to. I've, I've been in rooms, vice versa, which were mic'd improperly, and I'm like, whoa, that did, that was way better than this recording sounds. Like the the that, it, that person crushed, and it sounds like they're struggling. And it's uh it's kind of tough. But anyway, I asked the guy, I go, do you want me to do some of some of these for those recording? He goes, no, if they, they should be able to get laughs. It's their job. And I go, perfect. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> nice. That's the way to do He's it. He's like, I set up the mics. You guys are supposed to do the, the laughing. I go, okay, all right. And it's right. It's true. There's somebody that you look like that I can't put my finger on. Maybe it's the mustache, which I think is new, right? Yeah, mustache. for sure. God I've been damn. working on it for the past four decades or so. <laughs> you know what happened to me at a show? This guy, I go, uh, it was it was down near Cornwall. It was about a month ago. And this guy, I, I get up on stage or in front of the tables. It was at a brewery. There was no stage. It was a great show. Um, and uh, and this guy right away, he goes, he goes, uh, Walking Dead. And I go, what? <laughs> and he goes, you, you look like a Walking Dead guy. And I think what Norman Reedus. Yeah. Okay. And I go, he's a badass. I go, that's your heckle that I look like a handsome TV actor. I'm like, I'll take it. <laughs> like he's oh. like he's like Hobo Hanson. He's like kind of dirty. Yeah, yeah, ragged. Sure. Like that's why I grew this. I gotta be Hobo Hanson. No disrespect to him, but at least the way he always is portrayed in shows, he's usually like the the grifter kind of like. Yeah, because when you get when you get facial hair that's like mine or his, which is kind of like scraggly, like yeah, right? yeah. you have to be a drifter <laughs> for sure. I'm actually going to try out for drifting. Uh, You've got kind of like a, sure. a Three Musketeers vibe going, having the little guy underneath, though. <laughs> this is the first thing I could ever grow on my face. And people patch. go, oh, yeah, cool soul patch. I go, it's literally how my face it's grows the best hair. I can do. Oh, Leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, I was trying, man. Holy shit. Oh, man. Um, yeah, I've, it's been good for a couple jokes, for sure, because I, I've been able to be like... The the whole... I joke about how I look young and and not like very manly and stuff sometimes. And this works perfectly for that. Like I, uh, I go like, oh, I went to the beer store and the guy's like, yeah, nice try, kid. And he goes, uh, would you glue your own pubes to your upper lip? I'm like, no. He goes, you glued someone else's pubes to your upper lip? Like, oh. Yeah. That's pretty so, it's been fun. It's been fun doing some Dude. Jokes. When are you performing next? I, uh, something that I can come see. Like. Um, I'll be back in Ottawa after BC for, uh, I've got, I've got a couple of shows. Any Tuesday. You oh, that's come right. Out, come to yeah, a yeah. I almost came out last night too. I saw you performing there, and I thought it would it was, be a fun way to say a, what's it up. It was a great one. Um, come out any any Tuesday if you want. I can put you up. Uh, give you a, shit. Yeah, maybe if I can walk come up on with something. Spot. That'd be. I didn't know that. That gives me something to work towards. Yeah, I really gotta dust off the cobwebs. Like I said, I did something back in December, and that went really well. It was super fun. Uh, I got like actually one of those moments where I I was 
present enough to notice that there was like everyone was laughing and yeah. just sit in that moment instead of rushing through to the next joke. It was that, just it was the opener actually, the opening joke. Yeah, that's but great, dude. That's it was cool. Great. Yeah, it was just talking. I don't know. I hope I didn't say this last time, but it was talking about um, like just saying the weather kind of thing. Like, oh, it's so freaking cold out there. Hey. Eh? It's actually so cold. Like I took my dog for a walk this morning, and I uh, forgot my gloves, and I found myself actually looking forward to picking up the turd. You know, <laughs> and I don't know why, but it like boomed. I mean, it's kind of funny. I didn't think it was that funny, but the room loved it for some reason. So. Yeah, but they that's were, the contagious feeling where I'm like, oh, I got to do this. They were a real picking up dog shit kind of crap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that that actually, it's interesting you say that. Like, I find it kind of very fleeting and like f in be far, few and far between um, when I am conscious of that. Mm. Like I, I know people laugh at my jokes and stuff, but like, it's funny. Like sometimes I'll break once in a while when something really funny yeah. uh, happens or like I've, I've said some stuff to people and then I'm like, that's so mean. I can't believe I said yeah, that. Yeah. I'm laughing and stuff. But I, I really do find there's like a difference between comedians. I think there's people that hear the laughs and there's people that don't hear the laughs. Mm. And I think I tend to be one of the person that doesn't hear them. So like I'm, I can tell people laughing, but I'm like not, I'm like, oh, that could have been better. And people go, no, that was pretty good. And like, I'm focused on whatever and I'm not hearing that. And there's people that come off stage and they go, that was pretty good. And you go, what are you talking about? <laughs> You know, they laughed at one of your things yeah. and it was like, they're laughing at you almost. And those people are more just focused on if they think they did right by what they planned to do. Kind of, As long yeah. as they check the boxes and hit the marks that they wanted to do, then they're just like, oh, the audience didn't get it. You see some of that. No, the, like not even that. Or not, not even like the realizing. Didn't get it. They yeah. go, that, that was pretty good. And you, I, got, I got my laugh and you go, like, you got one laugh in six minutes. That's not that good. Oh, <laughs> man. That's that just kind of speaks to their track record then a little yeah, bit. It's that's nuts. like a high point for them. You but know? Uh, yeah, it takes all kinds. You got to start somewhere. So. Yeah, honestly, it was, uh, I think the reason I took note of that moment was just because it had been much like it would have been now if I was to do a set at your place next week or whatever. Uh, it's been months at this point. So, you know, mm -hmm. that was, I was obviously extra nervous and kind of feeling the, the jitters of going up there. So to have that crack it open right like that with off a joke that I wasn't even sure if it was going to land at all, I'd never even said that joke. So yeah, uh, it really helped me feel more confident for the rest of the thing. And then it went good. I kind of cheated because I, I had half of it on a, um, like written down because it was stuff I had written the last night and it was kind of point form. It That's worked fine. with the bit. Yeah. We talked about this when Chad was here. Let's move on. <laughs> yeah. Um, JFL being canceled though. I, I did want to talk about that because mm -hmm. I think that not that we're authorities on this or anything, but not at all. <laughs> it's pretty interesting that it just kind of came out of nowhere. All of a sudden they made this big announcement. Guess yeah. what? Not happening this summer. Yeah. I mean, I, a lot of people are reveling in it. Like, ha 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 serves you right. I'm like, I don't think they're canceled forever. You should probably watch what you're saying. Yeah. I think like, there was something in it about coming back strong next year or yeah. something. Maybe I'm imagining that. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know anything more than anyone else does, but I would imagine that it's such a, it's a pretty big event in Montreal. Like I think much the city tourism Montreal, wise. Yeah. Like, like let's, uh, let's, I think that a lot of the backlash I was hearing from comics does kind of make sense in that they are saying if you're at a point where you don't have the money to put the festival on, then maybe spend a, at least a little bit less of your financial margin on bringing big, huge stars from the States up here when there's tons of really funny Canadians that yeah. arguably should be getting the spotlight since this is a Canadian festival. Yeah. I mean, it's a world festival in a way, too. Everyone's invited to come and enjoy it, but... There should always be a, a focus on homegrown talent. Yeah, I I knew my trajectory would be like, if I ever went to Just for Laughs, it would be under something else, like oh, uh, really? some different project, or maybe like I if I got big in five years, I could do it or something. But I there's other stuff. There's yeah. other cool festivals. I think you could totally be like a headline type person at JFL, you know, maybe in a long time, but new faces uh, of comedy or whatever. Yeah. The, one I of those. could probably do a new faces set. <laughs> well, yeah, cra uh, no, I know you're not new, but I mean, yeah. new to the world, like at yeah. large, yeah. cause that's supposed to be one of those new things mustaches that, show. <laughs> yeah. That's me. For sure. But I'd like, I'd love to do like hubcap festival in uh, new Brunswick and like Halifax would be fun Winnipeg and like the, there's, there's other stuff. Nice. There's other stuff you can do. And uh, yeah, touring around be cool. I'd love to see more of the country and do shows and uh, see what it's all about. The, but other than that, yeah, I'm like, uh, the JFL really one wasn't a real big disaster for me because it's like, I'm, it sucks for people I know who would do it. Yeah. And it sucks for the industry because it's always better to have 
more than less. Yeah. But I think it'll come back the next year. I don't know. They'll, it's they'll weird, though, because now everyone's just wondering, well, what's up? Where'd all the money go? Like, who's responsible? Into some guy's pockets. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I guess. Like, Anyways, I guess I didn't. I don't know why I expected we'd get to the bottom of this. I thought maybe you'd have some intel. You're, yes. You're much more of a legitimate a <laughs> comic than me. <laughs> well, not that much intel. Yeah. Uh, what's the thing that made you laugh the hardest since the last time that you were on this podcast? Oh, my God. Or something that you found ridiculously funny. Not just like a comedy show, but... That's not what does it for me. No, I, mean, I didn't show, think so. Comedy yeah. shows, I laugh at a lot. I love comedy. It's my favorite thing. I love laughing, but like... Okay, a life thing. Yeah. The thing... I've t- I've talked to this about this with people, especially my wife. I'm like, the, I cannot tell these stories properly because they're things that happen that I see... And I'm like, this is the fucking funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. And it does, it won't translate and Mm. stuff. Like I once, uh, this is a long time ago. I once saw a a roofer, he was fixing a roof and he had a pot leaf shirt with leaves all over it. And it said legalize now. And (laughs) I lost my shit because like legalize it is like, it was like, it was like, I was like, this dirt bag guy's shirt is demanding political action from us. And I couldn't stop laughing. I'm like, this is so great. Um, I mean, I find that at least somewhat entertaining. Yeah, but not to the point that I did. Yeah. Like, I still can think about it and start laughing. It was 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. I saw a guy with um, one of those uh, chin beards, like a new metal chin beard. Okay. Like he had shaved everywhere, but just had this yeah. one, like the long goatee, but it was gray. Okay. And in passing like this, I was like, oh my God, that's the best. Because like a thousand thoughts went off in my head, how funny this was. Because to me, that guy had to watch him, speaking of aging, he had to watch himself age as new metal aged, <laughs> as his beard slowly went gray. Because there's no way, you don't shave off a new metal beard and then grow it back, right? No, no, like he's had that since Limp Bizkit was yeah, in there. Like hating. your buddies aren't like, hey man, you looked cool with that, you should grow it back. And then he's like, okay. <laughs> so he watched that thing, like it was like a time <laughs> a timeline of him getting old and, and, and everything he the cared about. New, new metal. Going. Yeah, and I, I, I lost And, and coincidentally, there was also a piece of corn in it. Oh, yeah, nice. new metal joke. Yeah. <laughs> he had seven strings on his view. Um, what else? I uh, oh, that's too funny. I, I had a I had this idea for like an uh, autobiography move or a, not an autobiography. Yeah, sort of. Um, a, mo- a movie about a person. I won't name names. A, 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 an older comic playing themselves playing themselves like a kind of like the wrestler sort of you remember the wrestler Darren Aronofsky like uh, Mickey like, Rourke yeah. yeah I never saw it but I know what it is it's good it's about a wrestler um <laughs> uh th- th- I had this idea of of this person their their life story like as a kid growing up or whatever but them as an older person playing every every role like seven year old them would be an, uh, old, an yeah. old man and stuff i feel like i've and, seen them do that for certain scenes in movies but not a whole movie yeah and just it would be a farce right be, yeah it would be and and i that and some other stuff around it i was crying i was like lying on my floor crying i was probably high at the time too it was during the pandemic i didn't have a lot to do and i and my wife has a picture of me like like this being like i can't do it i can't take anymore oh this is God. so funny and that's the kind of stuff that 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 really makes me laugh is these weird, goofy things. But, um, I mean, I probably, I, I gotta be honest. I probably laugh more than most people do every day. And I love it. I've got the best job in the world. I hang out with people that are funny and yeah. stupid and goofy and we and crazy. Most people I know are legitimately crazy, <laughs> but it's great. I love it. And at one point they started giving me money to do it. I'm yeah, like, that's... I'm like, well, this is a coup. You know what? This is crazy. I was like, I'm gonna, I gotta stop drinking as much at shows because I, I realized I was like, I think I go to shows so I can drink. It's a night out and stuff, and especially when I started, they're like, you'll get a free beer for showing yeah. up. I go sick, and then I'm like, I'll have four more. Well, after everyone wants that. to hang out after, and, th- and that's yeah. the best. Hanging out, uh, like what civilians don't understand is like comedy shows are fun, but hanging out after a comedy show is the the real event yeah like you hang out with your friends you do you talk shit do whatever you want um but i i was like okay come january 1st i'm only gonna drink at bars with money i make 
doing comedy, which was, which wasn't a lot at the time. It's still not. (laughs) Um, but I, as soon as I did that, people started offering me shows where I was getting paid like 10 times more than I ever. And I'm like, fuck. Oh, <laughs> like, crazy. And it's like, like karma's like, you should start drinking some more. I'm like, all right, cool. So I, I mean, uh, <laughs> I did change my, I used to, I used to go and drink and then go on stage and whatever. I don't do that anymore. I, I'll have a beer over the course of a whole show. Yeah. But, uh, I, I don't drink before I go on stage. I like to be clear headed. Chris, yeah. But uh, I do kind of want to get really fucked up on something and do a set and see what happens. Like take <laughs> mushrooms one time. Oh my god! And just be like, oh, that didn't go well. <laughs> or maybe it would. I don't. Please know. tell me if you're going to do that because yeah. I will come and watch for I think sure. If, honestly, I think if I was on mushrooms, that would probably be the my my nightmare. Because I remember when I was young, younger doing them, I'd be like, let's get away from every single person on yeah. earth. I just want to get like, vibes off everybody. Yeah. And- I remember being in a bar in Kingston and we walked in the bar. There's four of us and we were having a great time. We were just wandering around and stuff. And then we walk into the bar and within about two minutes, I realized all four of us had put ourselves against the wall, like in a line. <laughs> and we we're just like this. And there was people walking around and stuff. And I swear to God, I saw someone walking through the crowd like this. And I was like, that I knew they weren't a shark, but I was like, that's very shark like behavior of this person. <laughs> and they're walking through, and then like we lasted five minutes and we were like, let's get the fuck Yeah, out it's of a here. weird feeling. Yeah. I think it's roaming, fun. like you said, is the definitely the that's the move. Yeah. I also remember once looking at the architecture of a building and being like, that's great architecture. I'm like, man, drugs are crazy because I don't care about architecture at all. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> oh man um i think what else we got here i oh, was i wanted to tell you about that vape pen thing oh yeah yeah, yeah. so vape I, pen story that's what we got i mean now. from um for everyone watching i'm not like a huge drug fiend or anything i enjoy i enjoy like micro dosing uh some gummies here and there and the shrooms and, was when you were a teenager i take it or yeah uh yeah i was like 19 20 or something but i uh I had one of those vape pens. I'd inherited it from uh, from someone. I was given a bunch of weed stuff. They're like, I don't want this stuff anymore. You take it. And I was like, okay. And most of it's still there. I didn't touch it. But there's one of those vape pens. And and I tried it out one day and I was like, Psh. and I went, whoa, that's great. And for like half an hour, I had felt really good in my head and stuff. And then uh, I guess I'd only been pressing it down a little tiny bit or something. Oh, no. So then it was like 1130 in the morning and I had to pick my son up at around 230. And I was like, <laughs> and I was like, I'm like, uh, this is fine. I can just do this tiny toot on this thing and then I'll. It's usually like two hours and then you're fine. Not like, even. Not I mean, even. it was less than, it was like half an hour for me. But then I went, I distinctly remember it going click, click. And it went like super <laughs> far in. And I go, and I'm like, uh oh. <laughs> and then the crazy thing is like, I don't do anything during the day, right? Like I don't, I don't drink. I don't do drugs during the day. I stay clean until like basically after my son's in yeah. bed, I'll, I'll Wind do, down do whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is fun sometimes. I tell you about that. But I, I was like, now I'm super accidentally really high in the middle of the day. <laughs> and it was like, so I walk out, I go, I got to go get him. And uh, <laughs> and it's like really bright. And I'm just like, oh, is the sun all is that bright? Are you yeah, walking so, to pick yeah, him up? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I was okay. walking to get him. Thank God. Oh, no, I wouldn't drive or anything. Okay. I, uh, and, and then I was just like so baked. And then, you know, when you're baked and you're like trying to pretend you're not baked. It's and the stuff. worst. Yeah. And then so people are walking by. I'm like, hello. <laughs> and you're like, I wouldn't talk to them if I was yeah, not. Just random. Now people. they know I'm high for sure. <laughs> and then I. Good yeah, morrow. Yeah. Was, yeah. You're like, hello, neighbor. And they're like, what? <laughs> We've never talked before. Please stop. Um, yeah, how do you act? You know, like how yeah. do you act as a person? And then uh, I, it wore off like 15 minutes before, and I, I oh, like it, I just came in and I was like, I still felt uh, decent, but I was like, yeah, I did not want to show up and be like, hey, boy, how's it going, man? Like, yeah, when you eat, realize eat you're way too high, yeah, man. god damn, that's a scary feeling, especially if you yeah. got something even relatively important to do. Yeah. It uh, feels like anxiety nightmare. For sure. That doesn't happen to me because I take such small doses. It's great. It's, oh, I feel like I've had that happen to me countless times in my life. But I think it's also helped me battle anxiety in a way because I feel like I've I've had to forge through in so many of the situations where yeah. I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah. I'm way too high to be at work or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And then you just kind of do it. And then you're like, all right, yeah. It turned out all right. Maybe I didn't need to be so afraid. And then that actually helps the next time you don't get so And then the next day you're up. like, I'm going to get super high for work again. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. 
I pass uh, the time. But no, you know what's funny is like when my son's bedtime started getting a little more elastic, it was like he used to go to bed at seven. That was it, whatever, when he was young. And uh and on nights home, I'd be like, oh, maybe I'll take a I'll take a edible, a small edible to kick in like half an hour after he goes to bed or something like yeah. that. And then he's like, I want to stay up a little later today. I'm like, uh oh. And like now I'm on a clock, like yeah. <laughs> like against him going to bed and me gonna be starting to get high and stuff. And it's crossed over a couple times where I'm like trying to get him to bed and I'm being serious. I'm like Get in your bed. I need you to get, and he's like, huh, and he starts laughing, and then I just crack up, and, and then he thinks it's like the funniest thing in the world. He's like, Dad's laughing. He's not. He's not being yeah. strict. I'm like, I am. I just can't help it. I'm like, please get into your bed. And it's really funny because he must be like, my dad's a goofball. And I'm like, yes, because I timed this improperly. <laughs> yeah, that was <laughs> the goofball sure. part. But no, it's a, it's fun. It actually helps. It, it's really fun to play with a kid when you're kind of a tiny bit baked. Because yeah. you're like, whoa, tell me. Like that thing I said earlier, it's like, tell me about that YouTuber. What, are you, what do you do? It sounds interesting for once. <laughs> yeah, it's so easy to just make small talk with them. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I was thinking, do you, oh, this is just an idea. I, again, I guess I don't know why I'm just running podcast ideas by you. But do you think Please it would do. be fun to do some sort of podcast with like two, maybe even three guests, maybe two people. Maybe you come on this side too and we get two other people here and just do a kind of like fun hangout and we and, and everybody wears pajamas and we start at like midnight or something and just get drunk and, you know, hang out. Um, and maybe do a live one. I don't know. We've never done a live on YouTube one. Something uh, that could be risky with drinking. Uh, I, Somebody's going to say something terrible. Why do we have to wear pajamas? <laughs> I don't know. It's just like a theme for the podcast. <laughs> I feel like that's never going to fly with four guys. What are we called? The PJ Boys? <laughs> so, Let's go get like drunk with the PJ Boys. Sleepover podcast kind of idea, you know? <laughs> yeah, I guess it's pretty childish. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I thought I it would know. make for a funny visual. I think, yeah, okay, sure. You're like, um, <laughs> now I've justified it at least. Yeah, yeah, we like to drink in our PJs, so what? <laughs> <laughs> we're just drinking, just idea. We're just drinking Neo Citroen I think it could all the time. <laughs> uh, yeah, that would be fun for sure. I'd, I, I love getting on stuff like that. It'd be great. Just add some drink. I was kind of remiss this time that it's the middle of the day. Yeah. Because uh, last time I was here, I was like, I'm going to get so baked next time and just oh, see true. what happens. But, well, uh, shit, you just, yeah, we'll have to do that. Yeah, Organize no, no, something, no. get a couple more people. And yeah, that'd a, be fun, dude. That'd be good, yeah. yeah, I think we can accommodate four. And my dad wouldn't have a mic anymore, though. You guys could wear uh, superhero outfits and have to stay in character through the whole thing. There's no <laughs> way I can, that's happening. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That sounds like it would be yeah. funny for five minutes, and then it would be terrible. I get I get to be the Hulk then. I'm like, Hulk smash, <laughs> <I'm> getting smashed. <laughs> that's it. That's all I say. Get one joke, yeah. yeah. Um, shit, well, I, got, I mean, I've got more. What, what do we have time-wise? Yeah, I figured we we're somewhere around two hours. Yeah. Where are you at? <laughs> you want to keep going or you yeah, want yeah, to? Yeah, I can go for a bit. Okay. See. Well, actually, well, then if we're doing that, I'm taking a piss. Piss break. I'm back from peeing. Uh, I don't know that we're going to go too, too much longer here because uh, we got to wrap it up before too long. Yeah. I got to go get groceries. Um, I wanted to ask you if there was a turning point in your life. No, you would, no. You would say not it. yet. No, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, like, can you think of a, a major turning point that's happened in your life where your view on something really shifted, or you what you wanted to do or pursue really became more clearly? I mean, this is gonna be a bad answer, but probably not really. I mean, no, maybe not. Like, I kind of just kind of just wrote. I've just ridden the wave. Like, let's see what happens. And stuff. Obviously, I've been a kid was a huge turning point for sure. That's life altering. Like, yeah, it, obviously, like, it's just a stupid thing to say. I, well, no, there's something wrong with you if you have a kid and it doesn't change you at all. Dude, I love that when people are like, having a kid is the biggest thing in my life. You're like, yeah, yeah. compared to what? Like, like what would be the second one? Yeah, Phyllis. We're, we're like <laughs> Phyllis is actually a friend of mine. I shouldn't say that. Doris. It wasn't her. <laughs> this is like this person I made up. It's like, like. Yeah, there's nothing comparable to, to changing your life with kids. Like, oh, you got a promotion? That's a pretty big deal. I don't know. Yeah. Like, a kid is it's, like the, the it only, pretty much. It's the only life-altering thing. 
that really ah. changes your your. You know. I would say if we want to think outside the box, like I would say becoming paralyzed probably up there with having a kid as far as changing your life in a dramatic. Yeah, yeah, sure. Way. Cutting your head off is a big one. Well, too, no, but, that's not fair. Then you're dead. That makes like, no sense. In as a as a living person, like let let's not say like well, what about losing your arms? Like yeah, that would be pretty big. But 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 losing your arms doesn't change your uh, level of responsibility in the world, right? If anything, yeah, it just makes might. you not have to carry around as much stuff. <laughs> <laughs> what about just getting married, though? A lot of people would put that up there too, right? Like, yeah, maybe in the 1800s because that was like, oh, I'm <laughs> now true. I'm now I'm stuck with this person forever. Like marriage now it doesn't mean anything. People yeah, it can be treated like it reversed pretty it's easily. Supposed to mean something though. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely supposed to for sure. But like, but no, I mean having a kid that's changed. You're now responsible for someone else. That's the biggest. Yeah, thing. in marriage, a lot of the meaning was inferred from religious stuff and i think a lot of people don't necessarily swing that way anymore so the not that what like i just got married this summer it's not like it doesn't matter to me but it's not like uh, my relationship with my wife matters to me but like being officially married it's like oh that was lovely that was a cool thing to do i'm happy to call her my wife but it's Dude, not like like buying a house together is yeah is a bigger and then deal raising a that. child together is way more important than like yeah. just this legal legal thing but i guess for people who are of the religious sort you know that they'll attribute it to like god loves me more because <laughs> i'm doing this i don't i don't really get it like you're a better person i guess if you don't have sex before you get married and then you just stay married to one person because divorce is bad in a lot of those religions. Nah, so, that's just, that, that stuff pre, pre exists, organized religion. That's just, that's just societal. What shunning divorcees? No, keeping together, being like pair, betrothed pairs and stuff. It's, yeah, but not judging people if it doesn't work out, which certainly in some religious, it's like, oh, you don't get a divorce. You stay together even if you fucking hate each other because yeah, God will be mad or whatever. No, I think that's because there would be a breakdown of society where people, we go like well if, if you can leave your marriage then why bother who cares and if you if that's not true what about so hopefully this? you're married to someone where you don't want that to be the thing because you want to be around them you know hopefully yeah that's the dream but back then a lot of people just got married to whoever they were told to get married to right yeah well that's true yeah. be the betrothed but yeah i i mean that's that's lost it's it's uh, importance how long have you been married for um all right, I'm just assuming you're married. I know you yes. are in a long-term relationship. Yeah, where... we've been together about 20 years. And oh, wow. We've been married about 12 years, I guess. You know when your anniversary is? I don't. No, <laughs> yeah, I <Okay>. don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on October 5th. We got married October 5th, 2012. I'm fairly certain. That was That's a... Oh, no, no, never mind. I was going to say it's a day before my daughter's birthday, but she's not born That's that year. That's why we got married. No, she's not born that year, though. We were like, oh, I know, something's going to happen. We better get married. <laughs> <laughs> the day before. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, congratulations on all the years with your wife, then. Congratulations on getting married yourself last Thank year. You. That's great. But yeah. same thing. I mean, you were a long-term couple, right? It's just yeah, like, it felt it's, more just like a thing we had to do than... Yeah. Okay, so it was a blast. It was super fun. It was to me. It was more of just like a fun family. That's how friends it great. shindig. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was. And it was at my folks' place, and then they they sold the house like right away, pretty much. And really, uh, yeah. They well, had, they were already like, trying. We can't have. We can't <laughs> live in this weird married marriage house. We're gonna get rid of it. <laughs> yeah. No. They just. They had been on the market. Just. It was almost like just you know, seemed like fate or whatever that the house sold like right after that party and it was a really cool good did, time did you use that as a selling point you're like a good good location for weddings <laughs> yeah, we true. actually sold it either on your wedding day or the day before your wedding yeah it was, it was like other. like it was we're having the party after so yeah just have have fun because last time <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, no one puke on the rug or whatever yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was good, uh, good time. I feel like I saw some people I hadn't seen in a long time come out from. Uh, one of my friends came from like Winnipeg. She was in town for other stuff too, but it was partially to come to the wedding. So. Yeah, that's yeah. Great. I wish you could have come. Yeah, you? I couldn't. You were like in Europe or something, I think. Most likely, yeah. This was last June. Yes. Yeah, I think so. I <laughs> He's so. like, yeah. I don't know, dude. Honestly, <laughs> he just didn't want to come. The, the pat. No, no, no. I, no, I no, couldn't. Kidding, I couldn't kidding, for whatever man. reason. I, I'm just. I don't know, remember when we were. It was a June or July or whatever we were there. Um, no, that's great. It's, I love that. I, what's? I'm going to ask you this. What's your favorite rainy day activity? 
it's such an innocent question, but <laughs> like if you're trapped in a rainy house all day and it's like pouring cats and dogs. Oh, outside. in. Yeah. yeah. I, I like splashing in puddles, <laughs> dude. That's what I do. Well, technically yeah. that, that could be your answer. Yeah. I, I don't like, I don't like rain outside. Like literally having wet rained on jeans is the That's same like a nightmare for you it's the same as the mitts as with the kid it's like instantly puts me in a state of like oh my god i hate this so much wow. so i i uh don't splash around too much i used to have to work in the rain all the time um what's my favorite thing i don't know the reading a book uh scrolling the internet <laughs> Wait, i don't know why i thought books. i was gonna get an exciting answer here um like trapeze Yes, that's the other one. Did I not mention that? <laughs> no. That I have a full circus in my basement. I, I guess this kind of uh, ties into like the uh, the hobbies stuff from before. So I yeah, guess yeah, make, I don't making videos with your son. That'll be it. Yeah, sure. Um, I don't know. I don't. Uh, I don't have a lot of that I could think of hobbies that I like dedicate myself to. I'll pick up my guitar and play it. All oh around. yeah, this is something I want to ask you because I thought you were a drummer too. Yeah, I yeah I I've been playing drum. I've been playing guitar since I was thirteen. I've been playing drums since I was 17. However, now very intermittently, both of them. I just don't have time. I I, I want to start playing music again and writing music and stuff. Do you have drums? I do. I have, oh, a, I have an electric kit and a um, acoustic kit in my basement. Neither of them are set up. I have like this cool, it would be like this, but with a lot more music stuff. And I'm just like, oh, I don't want to do that <laughs> i don't want to set it up i'm so lazy <laughs> yeah, so that that's my real rainy day activity what is an acoustic Avoided kit as opposed like to like a normal drum kit oh okay okay okay. for some reason acoustic because you know with acoustic and electric it's yeah. the opposite with guitar i don't know what i was thinking yeah but. yeah just a normal one for sure yeah okay cool um but yeah i'd like to do that i'd like to set that up have my own studio and stuff and then uh, teach my son some stuff yeah. Some drums and shit. Yeah, I love playing drums. Drums is crazy because dr drums to me, like other instruments, I consider like, oh, I can play piano and I can play guitar. And those are like, those are tied together. They're like instrumental, like melodic things. When I started playing drums, I found it kind of like changed the way I thought about stuff. And uh, it definitely changed the way I listen to music forever because now I can't. You hear all the percussion. I now. hear the drums much more than I assume people who don't play do. I feel and like you can do that when you listen to anything. If you try to fixate on a certain instrument, you really would go like, "Wow, I never noticed this crazy bass line." Or whatever yeah, for it is. sure, you can do it. But like, I I don't try to do it on purpose. I wish I could hear music the way that it used to be, where it's all like completely together. Yeah, and I and I feel like I hear the drums a lot more than. Uh, than I used to for sure, but that's cool. But also I spend, oh yeah, I I'm spend all my time drumming on everything. Do you do a lot of like mouth beatbox type noises yeah, too? For yeah, sure. I'm doing that constantly. That was terrible. That's pretty good. I can do like a, not bad. Yeah. Oh, I thought we were gonna jam. Oh shit, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if that's what the people want or a little white guy with beatbox. Yeah. Sample that and make a song out of it. Do you uh do you have a, any major bucket list items? Uh, getting a hobby would be number one on my bucket list. Yeah. Well, we're talking about getting older. Spend a I'm day just inside if you've on, had, in the rain. Yeah. Have you had like some of that stuff that I was going through? Maybe the, the middle aged kind of like things that are hitting you. Yeah. Where you're like, oh, I got to get on that because like I ain't getting any younger, you know? Um, I don't think so, man. Honestly, like I, I, I'm easy to let things go. So like the stuff like, like uh, learn how to skateboard. I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm not going to do that. Like that's just going to... Take it from a guy who just broke his arm doing skateboarding yeah, last summer. Exactly. Like, And I felt like too old for this now. I, I, have, a, I have a lot of stuff that, uh, I mean, I'd love to, I don't have too many goals in terms of traveling. Like I've never been, I've never been like, I, I have to go to Japan. Yeah. But I would love to travel more and just hit up different places and check it out. Travel That's kind of where I'm getting to also. Yeah. I never really cared. Tra like traveling was fun, but it also seemed like just as much of a hassle a lot of the time. Like I don't love airports and... I do love airports. Oh, yeah? I, yeah, I love the whole aspect. It's just like I'm not driven to like, I wonder what it's like in Brazil. I just like... Sometimes it sucks where you go and then you're like, oh yeah, I wish I didn't come here. Yeah. I'm not going to name any locations, but... Yeah. Uh, Prison. <laughs> 
<laughs> Never been there. I, w- I wish I hadn't taken that long trip to prison. Um, I mean, yeah, I, there. Are, I actually am getting to the point where I'm like, I do want to go to this specific country, and I never really felt that way when I was younger. But yeah, getting to Europe is something that I'm starting to get yeah. more and more. I mean, curious. I'd like to go to any country, right? Yeah, it'd be, it'd be kind of cool, but I don't have any drive to it. Um, well, like, it's hard when you have a kid that's not that old because then you either need to get like your folks to babysit him for two yeah, weeks. Or you know, I, I've traveled a lot with, with him. Well, yeah, I, that works as well. We, we did my, my brother and my nephew and uh, my son and I all went up uh, to Scotland for a week last October. Oh, that's cool. And we hung out and we did our guy stuff because they live in England, so they they don't get a chance to see each other very much, and we don't. I mean. Um, but it was great. It was a blast. The four of us just stayed in the little cottage and cooked lots of food, went on hikes and stuff. It was, nice. it was awesome. So I love doing stuff like that, but I would never be like, I have to do Mount Etna. Or I, yeah. I, I have to do, man, I, I have to do something. I have to well, go Well, I guess, yeah, because bucket lists like are almost kind of just like putting pressure on yourself in a way. But Yeah, I'd really like to go to some kind of really tropical island like fiji or hawaii or something mm. that'd be kind of cool um but no nah, not really honestly be better every day that's what i want to do be, <laughs> okay. better. be good to people the slogan answer yeah. all right do you have any questions then for tavis or no or have we talked enough <laughs> oh, i think we've talked i enough. think you may have talked enough <laughs> <laughs> let's edit this down to a cool one hour. We can, yeah, we can yeah. chop in just the best. Um, that's honestly more work. Yeah. Yeah, it's easier to just leave it in. And it's like, my audience knows what they're going to get. It's a mixed yeah. bag. Sweet. You know, we're honest. We're nice. Yeah. Friendly. Yeah. But we're and not going to get it right every time. You can email us anytime you want. Yeah. <laughs> email uh, me at oliver at uh, justchill.com. <laughs> that's not it. It's at the beginning of the episode. Um, we will do the season five question at least, which is, I think, a cool question, uh, which is if you could revisit and re-experience a memory from your life, what would it be and why? Whoa. Um, like whenever you wanted, you could... I mean... Re, a memory or like like you like mean, you could go back happened. to it and re-experience it again you couldn't fucking can, change your future or any of that yeah. i just mean like be in that moment again and experience that experience again and and be able to like jump there as your happy place so to speak whenever you want right unless it's a horrible thing you choose to remember i don't know why you'd want that but yeah that time i went to prison no. <laughs> um i don't know dude i'm the the stock answer would be like seeing my son be born. Yeah, I, I like mention that. that sometimes when I'm setting like, it up even. But I mean, yeah, but maybe just actually, like... Actually, you know what? You a know, super that, fun adventure you did. That day that I accidentally got really high during the day. <laughs> 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 I just do that all the time. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. Um, I feel like memories are good because uh, the thing, the best thing about the past is that it's over. <laughs> I heard a guy say that at a coffee shop once. I go, that's great. I love that. Um, I I don't know. Live. What moment would I like to? I guess. Uh, like, did you have any like just fantastic things that have happened in your life where you're like, oh, that was a blast. That was just a such a good time. Could be, you know, anything. That, really. That's that's every day for me, man. <laughs> okay. I try to. Yeah, I try to. I honestly, I guess it comes into the same thing. I like, I like to go with the flow. Yeah, I'm stuff. seeing a theme. I here. would. Yeah, I would love to be younger again. But the, you know that thing where you're like, if I was younger and I knew now, I wouldn't waste all my fucking time. Yeah. You're like, but you don't, because wasting your time is the best. Yeah. Like, to some around, degree. Sitting around playing. But there's I a balance there for sure. Yeah, but tell that to a teenager. Like, yeah. hey, like. Uh, I want to tell my son, like, start writing a book or something. People will buy a book from an eight-year-old kid. Like, it's th- true. Like, let's make some bucks. But uh, you also are like, no, go have fun. Play on the slide and stuff. Yeah, that has to be the thing that's fun for them to do is like, oh, I want to write a book. Because it's true. If you have, like, a that kind of hyper focus at a young age, adults notice and people notice and that you just become this, like, yeah. prodigy and and looking back on this interview years from now when Dune dudes are uh, like taking over, <laughs> blowing up, be like, one. whoa! No, little did he know, <laughs> yeah. he interviewed one of the dudes <laughs> with the Z, the old dude. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, it was really good seeing you, man. Yeah, dude, for sure. All right, well, thanks for watching, everybody. Whichever camera, it's probably this one. Bye, bye.